Hey, what's up, Ecosystem? DOT Compliance 101. We're talking CDL, GVWR, MC Authority, DOT, FMCSA, ELD, IRP, UCR, IFTA, Insurance, Compliance, Safety, Credit Score, and Business Plan. Tonight's experts in the live panel include Brian Riker, your DOT guy from Fleet Compliance Solutions, LLC, Lionel Yates of CY Financial Solutions, Inc., and Ty Thompson, CTS Business Coaching. Bring your questions to the experts in the live chat because you're going to want to buckle in. It's Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. going on everybody thanks for tuning in to auto transport intel very excited to have you here every tuesday night this is tuesday nights live on auto transport intel i'm jay your host and we've got quite a lineup for you i'm just checking the audio please let me know if you can see me and hear me okay and i want to welcome you dude thank you for joining me on tuesday nights that's right it's information, it's entertainment. I do hope that you feel welcome. Um, I really, I appreciate everybody tuning in. Dealers, carriers, brokers, dispatchers, auctions, OEMs, insurance, truck, trailer insurance, manufacturers. Everybody's welcome. Please say hello in the live chat. Please do announce yourself. What are you looking for? What's your company? What's your product? What's your service? How can others help you? Tonight is a night full of information. There are no stupid questions. There never are. And tonight, you really can't go wrong. Ask that stuff that you got to know. And um, we're going to get to that. But before we do, we're going to go into some industry news at the quarter hour. I love to do industry news. It's national news, social media, business news, uh, car news, right? Corona news, a little bit of statistics. Got to cover that stuff, but briefly. Don't want to drive you crazy. And then, before we get to the interview and the panel, we're going to do a little bit of Super Highway. We're going to take a look back at a blog post that I did a couple years ago, which has kind of led to... I've done a couple other compliance shows, but I'm really happy to address it again. Some things have changed, and there's always... Man, every week, you'll find people asking questions looking for advice, and I'm really excited to have the experts on tonight. We're going to have DOT Compliance 101 right here on Tuesday night on Auto Transport Intel Live. And if you're watching later on demand, you can leave a comment. And if I can't answer it, which some of these questions, I'm not going to be able to answer. That's why I rely on the experts. I will make sure they see your question and get it to them and see if I can get them to contact you or help you. Brian Riker, Your DOT Guy. You can go to yourdotguy.com. He is with Fleet Compliance Solutions, LLC. He's an expert, and he helps he helps carriers and new entrants with safety audits, etc. Also, we have Lionel Yates, CY Financial Solutions. Lionel was on the show, I think, a couple months ago. Great information about insurance, starting a business, 
And that leads us into Ty, CTS Business Coaching. You know Ty, you know he's a coach, you know he's a friend of the show. And we're going to talk maybe a little bit about the roundtable last night. Anyways, this is going to be an amazing show. So much information. And by the way, you know, if, if you're thinking that we're, we're, we're running around, I've heard it before. We're running around out there, like, telling everybody to get into car hauling. No, no, I'm not. I'm not saying that. We're not saying that. Nobody is saying that. But what we are saying is, if you're hell-bent on it, well, we want to help. We want to help answer your questions, get the get the right information that you need. So do me a favor. Here's what you want to do. We're going to be right back. We're going to go into the live chat. So stick around, say hello. I can't wait to talk to you. Are you completely stressed out from all the calls and the contracts and the verification of loads when nobody answers the phone? Call Murphy Auto Dispatch Services today. Murphy Auto Dispatch Services has over 15 years of experience in the transport industry. We are your office while you are on the road. We book, we verify, and we bill out your loads for you. We have an excellent accounting staff and an even better dispatch team. Give us a call today at 417-273-0021. Or if you want to email me, it's murphyautotransport31 at yahoo.com. Give us a call today. You've got the phone number, you've got the email address. Go to murphyautotransportservices.com. That is Sue. And if you want to see Sue, you, we've, she's here Thursdays at noon on Dispatching Live. Love that show. Great information, load board search advice. And Sue is a licensed broker, so you can also ask her brokering questions. Dispatching and brokering. And it's not the same job. Who would have thought? Let's go into the live chat. All right, so let's see here. Now, I've got a backup. Great, man. This is great. I see. I knew this would be a popular topic, and um, we, we kind of come around to these big topics, these large pieces uh, once in a while, and Ty is in the live chat first. got to back mine up. Is this where you find compliance? Yes, Ty, this is where you find compliance. Thank you so much. Mark Grodicky, Superflow systems ty is the man and yeah ty is the man listen do i sound like I, i'm i see him a lot i i do online i see him all the time we had a great monthly round table last night can't wait to talk more about it ty thank you for being here mark thank you for being here danny b thank you for being here hello ati what's up danny b appreciate it buddy i see you in here all the time and i love it thank you so much kimberly's here in the live chat, welcome to Tuesday Night's Live, Auto Transport Intel. Please do say hello in the live chat, ask a question, love hearing from you, and, uh, you know, ask us, who's your customer? What's your running lane? What do you need help with? What, can, what questions do you got? What good news can you share? Who needs good news right now? I could hear some good news right now. Top Trending, what's up? Top Trending is here. What's going on, Top Trending? Carlos Braxton, hey, ACB Logistics, what's up, Carlos? Lionel Yates, how is everyone tonight? Lionel's in here. So before Lionel is on camera here in about 40 minutes, he's in the live chat. He's all yours. Um, let's see here. Who else we got? Hey, what's going on, Lionel? Um, let's see. Oh, Bridget is here. What's up? Jay, Ty, Mark, everyone in the house. What's up, Bridget? Thanks for tuning in. And Bridget, thanks for joining us in the uh, roundtable for a bit last night. Great to see you there. That's in the uh, that's in the industry news. I've got roundtable in the industry news. Murphy Auto Transport Services. Hey everyone, hope all is well and right in the world. Sue, glad to have you here. She's in the live chat. You can ask her a question. Michael Culler's here. What's up, Michael Culler? Dude, thank you so much for being a part of the roundtable last night. Thanks for being a part of the various shows. Saying hello it means a lot, Michael, and I I really do appreciate it. Look and sound good. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. That means a lot. And I check my phone. I check my phone. Make sure I don't have any, like, red alerts or flood warnings. Ahmed Sharaf is here. What's up, Ahmed? Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Great to hear from you. Oscar Cardona. What's up, Oscar? Thank you for saying hello. And in case I forgot, I think I forgot, please do remember to share and like this channel. This show means a lot. Really does. It really does. And I'll say this too, I've had, I today, I had another 
but I think two phone calls. They're awesome. I can't wait until we get get some. We got big heavy hitters thinking about doing an interview. Wow, awesome! Can't wait to tell you more. But I, you know, can't let the cat out of the bag. I don't want to blow it. Um, <laughs> the hostess with the mostest. Of course, I can see you. I can hear you, and I feel welcome. That's fantastic, Bridget. That is fantastic. I appreciate it. You know what? I'm gonna have. Uh, I rarely. I don't think I do ALD punch during the news, but you know what? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I know that uh, we got to be careful out there, but um, I hope you're feeling good too. I hope you had a good Monday, Tuesday. You know, it was a nice to have a long weekend and uh, see stuff blowing up in the sky. Uh, what's up, Green Boy? What's going on? Thanks for saying hello and tuning in. Um, hey everyone, just letting everybody know we got an open spot. That's right, Murphy Auto Transport has an open spot. Looking for a big car hauler. Ooh, okay. Rolando didn't sign up. Well, you know, it, and that's the thing, man. When you're in dispatch, that's another reason. Dispatch is no piece of cake. You know, people want to sign up and people go out of business and people think you're illegal. It's a crazy job. Uh, Bill Bad Apples is here. What's up, Bill? Thanks for tuning in. Happy Tuesday to you, buddy. Well, let's see here, uh, Bill. We got a lot of inter-talk. We have inter-communication. FNS Trucking. Hey, car people. Hope everyone is safe and healthy. Ditto, FNS. Thank you, buddy. Hope you are safe and healthy and prosperous. Now's a good time. Now is Transporter's Paradise. Am I right? Um, what else? Oh, Stephen, Stephen going. Freighter cars, which pays better. Ooh, cars, cars, cars. Yeah, it is. It's cars. It is cars. And, it, and um, uh, you know, it just looks cool. There we go. Cars pays more, but it takes more effort. That's right. That's why it looks so cool. David Spiro is here. Yes. Dude, we had an awesome conversation today. Thank you so much. I was just laying breadcrumbs about it. David is here. Thank you, David. That was awesome. Great meeting you guys today. David and Dan at, um, oh, shoot. Auto sled. Man, it just went out of my, I was thinking auto alert. But it's not auto, it's auto sled. Have you been to auto sled? Check it out, autosled.com. Can't wait to tell you more. Ahmed, sup boss, Levi coming in late, what's up? Dude, you're never late on Auto Transport Intel. Well, I mean, you know, if you get here at 10, that's a bit late. But you're right on time. We're just saying hello. I feel like I have the obligation to provide this channel with memes. You do. You are obligated to provide me with memes. I'm so glad we're on the same page. Excellent. Okay, guys, listen. I know what's next. You know what's next. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into industry news. I said it would happen at 8.15. It's 8.13. We're a tad early. So we got a, we have about a minute to kill. Nah. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into industry news. We're going to be right back. Have you noticed iTruckify links on load postings lately? Did you know that you can use these links to book loads online with Dispatch Center? Simply copy the link and open it in another tab. If you're already signed into Dispatch Center, you will go straight to the booking page. If not, you will be prompted to sign in. Enter your pickup dates and the driver information. The broker will approve your request and you will need to sign the terms for the dispatch. You will receive a text message with a link to sign the terms and conditions, and you can also sign them via the Pending Signatures tab in Dispatch Center. Once your signature is complete, the load will automatically appear in your Truckify mobile app. Get loads 24-7 without picking up the phone thanks to Dispatch Center. Air ukulele. Okay. So... Here's what we're going to do. Um, it is, yep, it's 8.14. It's 9, oh, there it is. It is now 8.15 Central. It is now 9.15 Eastern. That means we're right on time for, drum roll please. Industry news. Okay. 
So, um, and I listen, and I hope if you have a question, if you're asking a question or sharing information that has a question mark at the end of it, which I think is the same thing, then I hope that someone else is also helping you or you're saving it for when the experts get here in 30 minutes. But until that time, uh, I know, it's killing you. The, the suspense is killing you. Okay, I don't know why. I'm going to have to reinstall my... Don't you hate that? Come on, program. It's just a, it's a photo program. There we go. And there it's opening. Okay, tonight is DOT Compliance 101 with your DOT guy, Brian Riker. So Brian is our... He's, he's the meat of the topic, right? Because you have a lot of FMCSA, DOT, CDL, GVWR... Brian can answer those questions. And also, what we're going to do is joining him at the same time will be Ty, CTS Business Coaching, and Lionel Yates, CY Financial Solutions. This is going to be a an hour and a quarter extravaganza of information, knowledge, and uh, questions. That's what we're doing tonight. We did Wheel of Topics. Did you see the Did you see the notification go out that tonight was Wheel of Topics? I apologize. I don't know how that happened. Wheel of Topics was last weekend. Did you see it? By the way, I think we're going to be doing Wheel of Topics maybe more frequently than every few months. That was a good show. Thank you so much. Hey, don't forget to change the channel to Auto Transport Intel. This goes out on Facebook a few hours ago, every Tuesday, to remind you. We're on YouTube. We used to be on YouTube and Facebook. Eh, now it's just YouTube. Look at that. Look at Ty over there. Look at that. Here, let's go to... Did you see this? Thank you, Ty. Thank you so much, buddy. Um, and by the way, uh, I will say that, you know, we are... You know, this show is... This show is a lot of work. And, um, you know, the equipment and everything else... It's not as much work as a as a as an auto transport business, but it is a lot of work. So thank you so much for the super chat, Ty. Everything that comes to the show and 30% of that goes to YouTube. But I appreciate what YouTube does and that I can you know do this show on YouTube. I got to keep it clean. It's a family show. But Ty, thank you so much, buddy. That means a lot, and I appreciate every super chat that I get. It's the greatest thing. Oh hey, here we go. It's meme time. Dealer or carrier, which comes first? Follow the life of the car. Okay, or do I need a CDL or not? First count your millions. So which which meme? Meme one or meme two? I couldn't decide. And it could be neither. It might be neither. I think there's another meme in here. Oh, here we go, green boy. When you load a Model S on your trailer and it starts creaking. <laughs> So, you mean like the crunch of the week? Get the heck out of here. Yeah, actually, um, I liked that. You see this guy standing there just thinking, Oh, dude, I don't want to be on the crunch of the week again. Um, I saw this in the comments. Salvage units, no brakes. As soon as the loader puts it down, make sure they hold it with the forks. Until you put at least one strap on it before they fully release it. Also, before the loader puts it on the truck, make sure to pull the e-brake. People, don't forget a lot of these cars have no brakes. Good information. Actually, I'm, I'm going to put that in the minority of positive feedback that I see on Facebook. Okay, glad we got that out of the way. Hey, we offer three kinds of services. Good, cheap, and fast. But you can only pick two. You can have good and cheap, but it won't be fast. You can have fast and good, but it won't be cheap. And you can have cheap and fast, but it won't be good. I know. Uh, broke life. That's why we have the broke life t-shirt. Auto transporters work hardly. Hardly work harder than an ugly stripper. It's the broke life t-shirt. You can get yours now. You can, let's see, you can email jbass1371 at gmail.com. Send them an email. There's a phone number. You want a shirt? Let them know. What else do we have? Oh, car haulers just know stuff. You know, car haulers just know stuff. Been involved in moving cars for around 41 years. And there's some stuff. Car haulers are ingenious. The fact that you have to be means close to the dealership, no matter how many times. Ratchet bar. 
Fell hard to stash the charger cord, the coffee for that stupid machine, no matter what you do, I know. Dang it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. It just kind of gets better and better. So anyways, that's some of the stuff that car haulers just know. Let's see what kind of excuses drivers are going to come up with. Oh, here's another. I overslept. I'm 10 minutes away. Sorry, I lied. Dang, put the wrong address. Sorry, I can't do your load. I had a blowout. You know, I'm four hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's interesting stuff. Taking a chance. But you know what? Why do I have a picture of Bruce Lee? Okay. Because I'm taking a chance. All right? I'm taking a chance. I read something on Facebook, and it made me realize, you know... ATI, I, I take a chance every week with the way I do this show. I know. It's not it's not like straightforward. You're going to get rich. You, you're going to get all the promises you deserve. I'm going to quit again next week. No, we don't do that. We are, we're really sharing information here that, I know it's, it's laced with comedy, but it's hard to swallow information that you need to know you've got to you got to have this stuff i don't like hearing you know bad news about some of my business ideas but it helps right sometimes you get that brutal truth that's what mentors and senseis are all about that's what i do on auto transport intel that's why cars on the move is now a monthly roundtable. and if you missed it last night that's not a problem because i'm going to point something out Last night was our second monthly roundtable. This is a small circle of chairs. That's okay. We had a good roundtable. If you missed it, I'm sorry you missed it. It's open. You should join it next month. But I'm telling you this. What you don't want to do is wait until it's stadium seating. Because there's a huge difference between being part of hundreds, dozens, whatever, and part of a small circle. The small circle, it was great. And it's, you know, it's introspective. Everyone gets to speak for a long time, share information. I'm just pointing it out. You don't have to join. Again, I know I am Bruce Lee in the middle of a, of a ring of folks that do not want me teaching karate to the rest of the world. I understand that. I understand that. But in case you're interested in that small circle of chairs, monthly roundup, August 3rd, 7 p.m. It's the first Monday of every month. Join us. Go to autotransportintel.com. Click on CTS Business Coaching. I need a slide for that. I'll do that next time. So, for example, we're going to talk about some of this kind of stuff. You don't need sales experience for the effing load board. Well, that's definitely a Bruce Lee statement because it, it may not be popular. It might be popular when some when some people say it. Some stuff we say is not very popular. The money paid to a dispatch service would be better spent investing in an employee with knowledge of sales and to have the art of negotiation. Not a popular thing to say, especially in a freight brokers group. But you know what? It's interesting. There are more dispatch services than actual freight brokers in this network. Found that pretty funny. There is funny stuff on on uh, Facebook. Like I need to tell you. That's why he says change the name to Dispatch Service Network Group. Uh, oh, here's one. This is a comment that came in. Here we go. Um, oh. Natalie, I think it was. I fuzzed it out because there was a few words there. So I just... I always try to stay, take the safe path, right? Of like sharing people's information. But she says, I'm a new broker but haven't been able to get any shippers. Let me tell you how unpopular that is to put on a car hauling channel. There are plenty of car haulers that do not want to talk about this topic. I'm a new broker, but haven't been able to get any shippers. Let me talk about talk about taking a chance and saying something on a car hauling business channel. Let me tell you, if you're not going to do the broker job, then I guess the broker's going to have to do it. Because that's why we talk about sales, art of negotiation. Somebody's going to have to do the sales job. Somebody is. It should be you because you have the truck. But if you're not going to do it, somebody else is going to do it. That's just Bruce Lee in the room talking truth. Okay, finally got my new truck. This is Bill Keenan. She's all lettered up and ready to go. Cool, man. Thanks, Bill. Thanks for sharing that. Glad we can share it here on Auto Transport Intel. 
and thank you for being a part of the live chat. Oh, here's something else we might talk about. DispatchCenter.com. You can sign up at DispatchCenter.com. Tell me that looks complicated to get signed up with. Yeah. It's probably, what, about half of those fields are probably autofill. Quotify and Truckify. All your 24-hour auto transportation needs. If you join the small circle on the monthly round table, I'm telling you, you are going to get plenty of mind share. Don't wait for stadium seating. I wouldn't do that. Autohauler.com. Look at this. I see Lionel in the live chat right now. Lionel shared. This is a updated website, new website. Anyways, go to auto, and there's that hyphen, autohauler.com. CY Financial Solutions doc, or CY Financial Solutions Inc. Love that page. And you know what? One of the reasons I love this page, everybody should have a page like this. And I'm telling you this, and I said this in the monthly round table. If you're sharing photos of your truck on Instagram, you're halfway there. Become an ATI insider. Get ideas like this constantly. I can't turn it off. I've tried. I've just come up with ideas. Sign up at ATI. Be an insider. This is how you get your car shipping news. I can go all night. In fact, I'm going to. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is auto transport intel. Hey, Tennessee law. Let's do some news. Tennessee law now in effect expands the slowpoke rule. I know people are in favor of this. You know, get out of the way. Can't wait to find out the downside. I don't know what will happen next, but I'm sure there'll be, uh, there'll be a downside. There's always a downside. Every time we get a new law, we find out what we didn't want. Car carrier in Jacksonville, Blaze, declared constructive total loss. You heard about this? The, uh, the Hogue Sheeman? What's that? That's a big, man. That's a big, that's a big boat. Okay? That is a big boat. Total loss. Check this out. Insurance proceeds will be received in the third quarter in $26 million. So they're going to net cash proceeds after repayment of debt in about $8 million. Hey, wow. Sounds like an investment. I know. It's not a good one. But anyways, interesting news. Uh, here's some news. Coronavirus escalates at two General Motors key plants. Arlington, Texas, Wentzville Assembly in Missouri. 22 cases in Arlington and 12 in Wentzville. And I think those are in addition. Well, since the plants restarted anyways. Seems to be the trend, right? Everybody knows this is not news. You don't have to watch a car shipping business channel to know this. Although it helps paint the picture of what's going on. Or does it? How are... Look at that. Why are the cases so far up? Man, it's July, dude. Look... Look! Look at what what happened to the curve. We were headed, we were headed dead. It's frustrating. It is so frustrating. You know what's frustrating too when your when your uh, when your photo program crashes. It's all right. We're gonna get through it. Don't sweat it. Really, it's not gonna launch. <laughs> It'll launch. Hang on. If at first you don't succeed, dispatch. It's now it's there. It's loading. Hey, buying a car is going to become even more of a nightmare this summer as inventory dries up. And again, I realize that may not be a, a direct news link if you're in car shipping, but think about it. Wait a minute. Inventory is drying up. New car inventory is drying up. Wait, I I make a living hauling new cars, and you're saying it's drying up. Oh, I might want to watch some auto transport intel. The used vehicle market is reflecting in part the tight supply of new vehicles. So even though you have low inventory of new vehicles, pent up demand, used retail sales, note to self, check out used car hauling business auctions and dealers. Watch cars on the move Fridays at noon. How about that? I don't even need any notes. I thought this was a good idea. I wish there was a way to apply this in our industry. I'm okay with hugs and high fives. I'm okay with talking but not touching. Hi, I'm keeping my distance. <laughs> That's interesting. Auction Academy moves training to virtual classroom for the rest of 2020. 
you're going to see a lot more of this. And, and not only are you going to see a lot more of this, you are seeing a lot more of this. There is so much more Zoom. Thank goodness I started this channel three years ago and not like last week. That would be tough. That'd be really tough. Um, in fact, speaking of tough, Auto Intel Summit, man. So we were going to be there in August. Me and Ty love that show. It's digital now. It's not going to happen in the physical world. It's going to be in the digital world. So... Hey! There you go. It is time for an ELD punch break. I know I missed a lot of great live chat. And I want to catch up on some of that. We're halfway through the news, so stick around. I'm going to be right back. Um, hey, did you know about the Truckify links on Central Dispatch? Central Dispatch is like, doing what? Uh, no, they probably already know. So if you go in the reference ID, now there are hyperlinks. Copy and paste that into your browser. Book it. Negotiate. Get it while it's hot. With Truckify. Access is everything. Hi, everybody. This is Bill Zadites inviting you to become a member of CMG Premium. CMG Premium provides you with an upgraded level of knowledge, research, data, analysis, and much more. With VIP content curated from all of our industry verticals, you'll have more access with CMG Premium. Start your 45-day free trial by visiting autoremarketing.com and click on the green tab labeled Members. That's the green tab labeled Members at autoremarketing.com. Have access to more with CMG Premium. Hey guys, thanks so much for sticking around on Auto Transport Intel Tuesday nights a lot. I see some great things happening in the live chat. I really do appreciate it. I want to say hello to Jay Wilson. Thanks for tuning into the show. And yes, I do receive, you can email me, autotransportintel at gmail.com. Um, send me, you know, your memes, your photos. Some things don't make the final cut into industry news um, because it has to make sense somehow. You know, such as, where are we going to go next? <laughs> where is he going? Uh, oh, always, CMG Premium is after the CMG Premium ad. Again, that is Cherokee Media Group. That is Auto Remarketing. That is Auto Intel Summit. Amazing content. I love it so much that I, you know, talked to Bill and I said, listen, man, let's do, let's, let's collaborate in some fashion because I want to see more collaboration across there are, there are several ways to get your automotive media, but there's only one real way to get your North American used and new car shipping news. That's on Auto Transport Intel. But for example, it's the automotive news that if we, if we, if we read it and interpret it, we see where this is going to affect our car shipping business. Sixth. What is Sixth? So Sixth apparently is a German uh, rent-a-car uh, a German rental car company and they are taking over 10 airport branches from Advantage which is also going BK in Delaware that's interesting uh, let's see what else we got auto remarketing supply entering the wholesale market look for that higher than expected wholesale um, market happening at the auctions we also when on cars on the move we cover some of this stuff hefty supply once delayed lease returns mark making their way back in okay so those lease returns that got delayed from COVID, don't worry we you know we don't want to see each other or touch each other keep your lease for right now those are starting to come back rental car companies major defleeting from the bankruptcies an increase in repos repos are back lease returns are back and the market is needing to make up for lost auction activities. That's why everything's gone crazy. Obviously, we know about Hertz. We expect other rental companies to reduce their fleets during the summer and the fall months. Could lead into a quarter of a million additional rental units hitting the wholesale market. That's a big deal. You definitely want to know that. If you're, you're hauling cars, you definitely want to know this stuff. I know some folks are reading it, but not everybody. And the driver, listen, if you're a driver, get the news, man. Be able to talk to the executives. So when you're sitting at the barbecue, it's not just, you know, you know what I'm saying. That's enough, Jay. We got it. ACV auctions. Did you hear this? Here's one for the barbecue. May and June were the largest sales months in company history. That's amazing. May and June for ACV auctions. They sold over 30,000 wholesale vehicles 
in May, over 40,000 in June, and nearly 75% of the overall unique vehicles listed. And auctions are posting record um, sales. Amazing. Yeah, we all know digital digital auctions are huge. And, hey, man, listen. If you don't know what a digital auction is, ask the question. It's okay. I don't know. I don't know what it is that you don't know. You know how sometimes that you don't know what you don't know? Well, when you find out what you don't know, let me know. Central Dispatch, over 60,000 search results. If you look at the domestic 48 for like seven days out, over 60,000. That is Transporters Paradise on the load boards. That's what we talk about on uh, Dispatching Live right now. And that's why companies like Reindeer Auto Relocation, they already pay well. They will match a competitor's rate. Similar car, similar lane. They'll match the rate. Let them know. Contact them. When you add it up, now this is interesting news from Cox Automotive. Paint the full picture. When you add it up, it looks like the industry will be heading into an even more challenging sales environment in July. Say what? Wait, but what? I thought we were just looking at all these like hockey sticks. That's why it's important to pay attention. It's got to come back down sometime. The kite has got to come back down. And then it goes back up, and then it comes back down. Hyundai Glovis attains exclusive contract to ship VW Group vehicles from Europe to China. That's a five-year shipping contract. From Europe to China? Oh, really? Not interested in international news? Okay. To each his own. Well, that's not what Automotive Logistics thinks. They cover it globally in supply chain. And there's some there's some bad news. Lockdown, lockdown. There's still bad lockdown news. In fact, some lockdown news. Did you hear it? I heard bubonic plague the other day. I'm like, dude, really? Did you have to really go there? And it, and then it could get ugly. That's just great. Um, in fact, struggling Overland Park Trucking Company is getting a seven hundred million dollar loan from the government. It can be done. I know it's not car hauling, but uh, Treasury to loan seven hundred million dollar Overland Park Trucking Company. <sighs> that is a hefty... What is this? Uh, too big to fail? Hey, by the way, speaking of... Oh, wait a minute. Where'd that go? You can't see the news. <laughs> Was that all just me on the screen? And you couldn't see it? Hmm. Is this button working? Okay. All right, well, this button's working now. Look, here we go. Let's keep going. You know what? That's how you know it's live. Guys, on a live show, anything can happen. And uh, that's what's also interesting about it. I'm just going to say this. I'm going to address I'm gonna address the elephant in the room, which is the possibility that I didn't show the news while I was talking. I want to say this is that uh, with everything online right now and conferences and seminars and interviews, uh, it's cool that it's live. But weird problems can happen at any time. You can hit the wrong button. Maybe an app won't launch. And uh, that's one of the things I like about Auto Transport Intel. Man, I've been going live for years now, every Tuesday night. Did you know this is episode 145 in a row? I'm just saying. Um, watch out for spam. Ty and I both got this today. If you got this today, RFP July 2020, I'm thinking don't open it. Now, it's a request from an auto transport company for an RFP to do business. But if I got it today and they need it tomorrow by 1230, that should be your first flag. Anyways, be careful. Don't open everything you receive. This is another one. I got this in, um, in a text. Hey, is this auto? Tried to deliver a delivery for you, but you weren't home. Please go to click PR Transport. Be careful. As if life wasn't hard enough. Thank you, Bridget. That's super cool. What is a digital auction? Yes! Thank you for asking the question, Bridget. There are no stupid questions, and it's actually a really good question. So, a physical auction is a location where they have cars, and the cars would run through the lane, and people would bid on the cars, and they're huge locations. You know what a an auction is. You've heard of Mannheim. You've heard of Odessa. There's also independent auctions like America's Auto Auction and other chains. Okay, so those are your auctions. Digital auction is where... Now, the purpose, what's the purpose of an auction? 
where people can buy and sell vehicles. So a digital auction is when you buy and sell vehicles online without having to go to a physical auction to buy and sell in the lanes. And that already existed, but now with COVID, it is like the bomb, right? It's everywhere. And it's growing. Now, what does that mean? Why is that important? And it's like all these other news stories about used cars, wholesale, rental. The reason this is important is if you were a car hauler and you made a third of your money pulling cars to the auction, from the auction, back and forth and back and forth, and they're not doing that anymore because they're selling them on a digital auction, that's going to affect your business. And you need to know that. And you need to know what it is. So when the dealer, so when you go say to the dealer, listen, last last month I, I moved 20 for you. And this month I moved three. What's different? And he says, digital auction. You don't know what he's talking about, right? It's not going to feel good. So now you know, digital auction, that's internet sales. And that means sometimes, usually, in fact, overall, it just means less movement of actual cars. And now they're talking about, this is really weird, the digital physical auction, where you're at the physical auction, but they don't run the cars through the lane. You just watch it on monitors. I'm not exactly sure why you go. I mean, I'm sure that, well, there are reasons. Jay, you don't know because you don't work in an auction and you're not a dealer. There are reasons, but it's not the same experience, and um, and it affects the physical movement of vehicles, for sure. Anyways, good question. Thank you so much for asking it. And if anybody has anything to add to that, please do. I am not the end-all, be-all expert. I host a channel where I have end-all, be-all experts, and I've picked up several things along the way. And I used to be a dispatcher, and... Uh, that was a hard job. That was a hard job. Okay, let's talk about some other stuff. This is really important. By the way, guys, I'm, I'm running a few minutes late because I got, I'll do the information superhighway really quick. Uh, but this is important for tonight's topic. Did you see this? They want to, not only do they want to, but the House passed the bill raising it from 1 million general liability to 2 million general liability. That is not, that is not just one digit. That is, uh, that's a million digits. That's a lot of digits, man. Oh, next week is the rental car update. That's going to be an amazing show with Chris Brown of Bobbit Media. Um, I was going to, in April, I was going to go to a show in Vegas, meet Chris, learn more about the rental car industry. Didn't happen. So three months later, he's going to take it live on Auto Transport Intel to some degree. Can you ask this guy about the clearinghouse thing? I've not been able to get on. Even paid a company who said they'd do it all. Take your money. Take you to the website. Don't let you do anything. It's a problem. Okay, we're going to talk about clearinghouse tonight. Man, i got to reinstall. This is this is stupid. Are you going to... I mean... <laughs> what's it going to take to... i got a black screen. Jay? I've got a black screen. Man, I've only got a few more slides left. Really? The program is just crashing. That is just... Oh, that sucks. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. The program has crashed, but you're not crashing the program. Let me tell you something. Thank you, Bridget. I'm, and I hope that I hope that helped. And, uh, and it was quick. I got a lot of stuff to do. I'll tell you what. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to... Um, that screen fell asleep. Studio's going crazy. Can we get the camera guys in here? We need to fix lighting and sound. It's just me. Um, <laughs> that's okay, man. You know what? You know why? Because I, you were probably referring to Dave, and I was making videos with Dave. I get it. I'll tell you what. Stick around. What are we doing? Oh, we're going to go into, I'm going to do a quick super highway, and then we're going to go into the interview. You're not going to want to miss it. I'm going to be right back. Hey guys, Ty, CTS Business Coaching. I connect dealers, auctions, and carriers. If you're a dealer and you're not getting your inventory on the lot in five days ready to sell, you've got a problem. It's called interest. Like I'm telling you something you don't know. Give me a call. I can connect you with an auction and a carrier and you can get your cars on the lot in five days or less. 417-483-2775. Thanks and have a great day. And that is Ty. He's going to be on the show tonight. And um, thank you so much, Ty. I love running that um, because it's quick. It's to the point. And thank you, Lionel, 
Uh, I, 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 I'm, I have a tendency to agree with you. I think that the information here is insane. I spend, literally, I spend the, the days leading up to Tuesday nights, I spend on the show. But on Tuesday, it is just hour after hour. I don't even know. I mean, look at, it's 8.45. I haven't stopped talking. I barely, I haven't stopped to do anything other than mess around with the uh, stinking photo program. Let's do this. Let's go into the, uh, let's go into this. This is the information superhighway. This will be quick. Here's what I want you to do. Go to, here you go. Go to autotransportintel.com. You can do this in any browser on your phone. It's mobile friendly. Go to autotransportintel.com. Um, thank you, Ryan. Ryan is actually right here at the wheel. Um, if you've got a question, there he is. You can chat it in the box. You can give him a call. But I'm gonna go ahead and close that for the moment. Look at this. I'm gonna scroll down here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna search startup. All right, and this is gonna bring up a blog result. There we go. Auto transport business startup, and let's click on it because that leads us into what we're talking about tonight. It kind of kind of establishes why I'm doing the show tonight. Auto transport business startup. This is a blog post. I did, okay, so that was December 2017, wow, that's two and a, is that two and a half years ago? I just want to get my math right, two and a half years ago, wow, I was a dispatcher, and two and a half years ago, I realized, you know what, you know what we really need is, if you Google, it's kind of funny, if you Google, like, start car hauling, like, there's one blog post I found that's like, it's three steps, I'm like, that is ridiculous, that is just, and then another one was like, it's seven steps. And I'm like, no, that can't be right either. Now, I'm not saying this is the official 20 steps, but it is 20 steps that will put you on the path. And two and a half years later, I think it still holds up. Um, we're just going to take a look at it. But it starts with business plan. And I put this together with the help of some owner operators and small fleet owners. There are these all these links get information, medical card, and really, again, we're still talking about setting up your company. Now you're talking about insurance, equipment. Now you're talking about some of the certification, which I know some folks look into this first, or they're like, yeah, just, you know, the CDL, the trucking. Now, when do you do what you do and how you do it? Then, well, of course, that's up to you. But this blog post really, and it helped me also understand painting the picture of what it takes to build a business in auto transport. This is no small, this step 11, this one can hang you up. Creating all your driver qualification files, your truck maintenance plans, then you got proper marking of vehicles. Now we're into load boards, which, you know, it'd be nice if you could see Central Dispatch while you're doing steps one two, through 12. But anyways, and then learning, you know, the technology and doing the BOLs and then getting the ratings and the load boards. And in fact, and even since I wrote this, you want to click for top 12 car hauling load boards video. This information continues to change, but I will say I'm very proud of the 20 steps to car hauling blog post. Oh, look at this. And you can even download, click on this and you can download a copy of, and here's your 20 steps in PDF form with links pretty cool pretty cool stuff really proud of this and i hope you get as much out of it as um as it took to put into it and really again that leads us into and don't forget that's autotransportintel.com that leads us into tonight okay here we are so it took me 50 minutes to get to the introduction of tonight's guests but it was worth it if you're just joining now, you're just in time. You want to bring your questions in the live chat. We're talking about all those anagrams that are so wonderful and complicated. CDL, UCR, ELD, IFTA, etc. Bring it in the live chat. We're going to be right back after this. You're not going to want to miss it. Your DOT, your DOT guy, Lionel Yates and Ty from CTS Business Coaching. Buckle in, because we're going to be right back. Hey guys, Jay at Auto Transport Intel here. Listen, don't wait until it's too late to get FMCSA and DOT compliant. You need to take care of that right away. The best way to do that 
is to go visit my friend Brian Riker at Fleet Compliance Solutions. Now you can go to Fleet Compliance Solutions LLC or you can also visit him at yourdotguy.com and here he's got services to help you out whether you're a single owner operator or a fleet you can contact him and ask him for you can get USDOT compliant applying for your authority right off or if you're gonna be audited you're gonna need help and he helps you make sure that you navigate the DOT and be fully compliant when you're uh, going through your safety audit also he can help out with safety training coaching OSHA environmental concerns help you protect your CDL you can visit him and his staff go to fleetcompliancesolutions.net or yourdotguy.com talk to Brian if you need an expert witness if you're gonna end up in court over a problem you're gonna need some help and he can help represent you there are links here find out more about fleet compliance solutions and also he's got articles and information if you got specific questions you can contact him at 570-228-6210 and I highly encourage you to visit Fleet Compliance Solutions LLC yourdotguy.com tell them ATI sent you Brian is a friend of the show thanks welcome back to Auto Transport Intel Tuesday nights live I've got my guests uh, lining up in the Zoom room and getting ready, testing audio. By the way, mic check, one, two, three. You guys can still see and hear me okay. Hey, Green Boy, by the way, just saw your live chat. You know what you want to do? CTS business coaching information is just, just before your question. And um, Ty loves to give a first free talk. Give him a call, 417-483-2764, and he'll be happy to answer your questions, get you started, and give you some great ideas. Ty loves to uh, strategize and share good ideas. Okay, let's go to the Zoom meeting. Let's see what's going on here. Let me get your audio going, Brian. Mic check, one, two, three. Brian, can you see me and hear me okay? Yes, I can, Jay. Thank you for having me. All right, man. Thank you so much. Thank you for sticking around, listening to me jabber job for 50 minutes. Like a captive hostage, right? In a hotel room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's excellent. Um, so, Brian, will you please, I know you've been on the show before. I know it's been a little while. Will you please say hello to the Tuesday Night's Live audience and a little bit about yourself and your company? Happy to. Glad to be here, Jay. My name is Brian Riker, a DOT safety compliance expert, but I'm not just a guy that read a book someday and learned about this. I've been you in the trenches. I've got 25 years of experience in the towing and car haul business. Still hold a valid Class A CDL. I sell some car haulers and tow trucks. I work with worldwide equipment sales to deliver them to find customers all across the nation. Uh, oh, I'm business editor for American Towman Magazine. I present trade show uh, trainings and lectures, and that's about it. But I've been where you are. I've started a company from nothing. I've just about lost everything because I did it wrong. I learned how to do it right, and now I'm here to help teach everybody what they need to know. Very easygoing guy. Probably give away more than I should, but I'm here to help you because I want to see everyone do it right. I've noticed, you know, and I've I appreciate that. I've noticed that you really do, um, you really share a lot of information, and um, and I never want to take more than I should, right? So I do, you know, Brian. I really do appreciate that. Oh, let me move a couple things around. Ty is joining us here, and you travel a lot too, don't you? I mean, yes, I do. <laughs> Just since this COVID stuff has started, I've been in 32 different states since March 5th and been in Washington, D.C. because I represent the towing industry with the Towing and Recovery Association of America. We were the last group in the uh, house office building before they shut it down to the public when COVID started. We were there fighting for some weights and measure changes and a couple other changes that will help not just the towing industry, but it will help us in the auto transport industry as well. Wow. Um, and hey, by the way, okay, so I want to say, oh, Ty's got, we're in, are we in the background? Got the big screen, we're in an endless oh. loop in his background. Whoa. Michael Culler gave me the idea. Watch it on the big screen. <laughs> Michael Culler, that's so cool. Thank you, Michael, and thank you, Ty. 
How are you doing, buddy? Oh, he's he's oh now he's we lost his attention. He's already he's already the ADD's already kicking in. Uh, no, I'm doing great. Oh, um, about the show tonight. Matter of fact, I sent I know. Uh, two guys to Brian and Lionel today. Wow, that, that is doing both. So cool. Yes, <laughs> that is awesome. Thank you. And by the way, Lionel, can you hear us? Yes, indeed, Jay. How are you guys awesome. this evening? Awesome. Thank you, man. All right, cool. I'm glad you're here. I wanted to make sure. Um, whenever, let's see, you're joining by phone. Whenever people join on the phone. I want to make sure that um, that you get in the room okay. So yeah, I, I think I hear you loud and clear. Can you guys hear him okay? He nice yes. and clear. Hey Lionel. Uh, hey Ty, how you doing this evening? Good. Send a couple guys your way today, hopefully. Great news, great news. Yeah, you're the man. Both of you guys, I like both of you guys a lot. Appreciate you. In fact, and line up, do hand off somebody to. Here you go. Go to talk to Brian. Which, by the way, I wanted to throw something in. I don't know where we're at. I had to take a break. But. I love it. Do um, it. Here's the. This is cool because uh, both of these guys, I have incredible respect for. And the reason is because when I coach people and I start talking about, well, you got to get your DOT and then you got to get insurance. Those are the two things I don't want to know anything about. And I know for a fact that it does nothing but elevate my blood pressure and make me want to, why do we have so much regulation? Why do we have so much in trucking? You know, it's ridiculous. So uh, I love telling people, go to Brian, he'll set it up for you and you don't have to be driving your head against the brick wall. <clears throat> so, and then the same with Lionel, but it's really good to have guys like this. And I tell people, Brian, I'm like, you're a walking encyclopedia of the DOT book. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, thank you. We yeah. all should know the rules that we have to play the game by because we need to know them better than the guys out there that we're playing against. And that's true. Yeah. Well, and and it's this kind of topic where, I mean, I feel like I'm in a danger zone. Because I know everyone has their different blind spots on these various topics. So it's like, you know, this is like when we open up the closet that we never go into. And we're, we're just going to open the doors, let everything fall out, and start folding. We're going to do this thing. I'm so... I want to see. I really want to see some questions. And <laughs> Michael Culler's already. Michael Culler's already talking about James Lamb. Brian, we talked about broker versus dispatcher. We're gonna do a future show on this, okay? Like, I want to okay. get. I want to get another panel and talk about broker versus dispatcher. I don't want to get off topic. Okay, where should we start? We're going to do DOT Compliance 101. Where do we start? All right. Uh, where do we want to start? You need to decide your business plan and what your operation is going to be so that we know what regulations you're going to need to comply with. That's a very simple place to start uh, because there are different – most of the regulations are the same, but there are different regulations when we're trying to stay under that magic 26,000 pounds where we don't need a CDL. Um also, if you're going to do interstate versus local transportation, there's different regulations. So we want to speak, talk about DOT compliance. We start with the business plan. What are you going to do with your trucks? And, and let's say, okay, let's go with, because I know you, you get a lot of, okay, I just want to go everywhere and make money. What if I say that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will, I'll challenge you that that is what you really want to do. You need to understand the lanes, understand where the money is. You may not run all 48 states. You may find a little niche that works. When I was running my trucks, we ran uh, Mannheim, New York, which is Newburgh New Auto Auction, upstate towards Clifton Park, out to Syracuse and back, a nice simple triangle. It worked great for us. Uh, if you want to run all 48 states, there's nothing wrong with that. It just increases your compliance burden. There are a handful of states that have state specific requirements such as the New York Highway Use Tax, uh, New Mexico Weight Distance Permit, uh, Arizona, Wyoming, and I 
want to say Montana, but don't quote me on that. They require apportioned registrations at a much lower weight rating than a uh, than most states do. You get into the larger trucks and you have uh, weight distance in Oregon. You have Kentucky utility number. There, there's a couple of things. And again, that's why it goes back to the business plan of what you want to do. Okay. Ty Lionel comments? Yeah, I was just taking a couple of notes there. I wanted uh, Brian to speak because everything that Brian is, is, is referring to falls directly under a category the FMCSA gives you as a CSA rating. Uh, and I, I just wanted to say this in respect to this, that a lot of guys don't look at this when they get into the business, but this is what's evaluated the second year and when you're in the business. The uh, insurance companies are going to make the determination if you are going to keep your policy in place. And I found some interesting things about this today because I had a customer that was can his policy was canceled uh, the other day. Uh, he had done such a good job at <laughs> avoiding the compliance officers. He had only been pulled in three times, but Unfortunately, one time out of the three, he was put out of service. So the average CSA rating is 20.7%. Uh, and obviously, one out of three is 33%, and it exceeded the average by 13%. They canceled this policy. So everything in retrospect that what Brian is saying falls directly into your policy costs by the end of the time that you get done after a year and also makes the determination or if you're going to be in business or not. So be very, be very aware of that. Absolutely correct. Lionel could not have said it better. And so many people get into the business and don't understand the rules they have to play by. So they end up getting some of these nuisance tickets that are completely avoidable. And then it, like you said, it affects their ability to renew their insurance. It affects their ability to get work with some of the larger brokers that look at the safety rating they have. And it is a law of averages. So when we decide we want to run out law and run around the scales, well, that one time that you get popped for something makes you look horrible. Or I've even seen where you have zero inspections in a year and some underwriters have a hard time believing that is true. So they automatically assume that you're playing the cat and mouse game and running illegal, trying to avoid the inspections. Uh, so DOT is not always the enemy. As long as you know you have your stuff together and when you roll through there, you're going to get a clean inspection. Yes, indeed. I also found another point out about uh, talking about running under 26,000 pounds. Uh, I, I spoke on this before, but it doesn't matter if you're running under 26,000 or you're running over 26,000. The DOT inspector is not going to change hats. He's going to say, oh, you don't run under, you run under 26,000. I got to use a different hat for the laws that fall for you guys, or I'm going to have a different hat on for you guys that fall over 26,000. He's going to rate you on the circumstances of commercial driving. He's going to look at the same book. So if Absolutely you don't, correct. if you decide that you're not going to get in as a commercial driver, I would still suggest that you educate yourself with the uh, commercial guidelines. It will keep you in order. I, I think that's a, I was just going to say that's a perfect segue to get into the weights and measures portion where we wanted to talk about uh, gross vehicle weight rating and how it affects what you can do with your company. But I don't want to take over your show, Jay. So you No, I love next. it. No, it's all you, man. Keep going. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So, uh, again, Lionel, you're off. You're absolutely correct. And, and that is a great point. 98% of the regulations are exactly the same whether you are a CDL driver or not a CDL driver. Really, the only differences are your apportioned registration, your fuel taxes, and what it costs to register that vehicle. Otherwise, anything over 10,000 pounds becomes a commercial motor vehicle in most states, and in any case, if you're doing interstate hauling, so you end up with 
all of the same rules. And I find in some of the other industries I consult for, the salvage industry is horrible, uh, the used auto part industry. They like to take a F-250 pickup truck at 11,000 pounds gross vehicle weight rating, send the 18-year-old kid out to go deliver parts to the local body shop. Then they find out, oh, crap, that's a commercial vehicle. He needs a medical card. We need a DOT number on it. And, oh, by the way, because we brought those parts in from another yard in Arizona and we're in Texas, we're in interstate commerce, so we're really in trouble. So you're absolutely correct that most of those rules apply. So there really isn't any use in trying to skirt around the rules. A commercial vehicle is a commercial vehicle is a commercial vehicle. Um, I see in the live chat here, too, that Michael's talking about the clearinghouse. And, yes, there are uh, penalties for not complying with the clearinghouse, both for the motor carrier not being registered at all by January of next year. And if you've hired drivers and you do not do your inquiry into the clearinghouse, you're not in compliance. So if you're hiring a driver subject to a drug and alcohol test, so that's a driver with a CDL expected to operate a vehicle that needs a CDL, you need to make sure you are registered in the FMCSA's Drug and Alcohol Consortium. There are some companies out there that want to take your money and they don't get anything done. This is something you can do for yourself for free. The interface on the FMCSA's website sucks. The government's not known for making good websites. It is something I can help you with, too, if you need some help with it. I just want to get this out there real quick. I'm not the guy that's going to tell you you have to call me and send me a bunch of money all the time. I can't stand those companies that pop up the moment you get a DOT number that are trying to sell you something that you don't really need. And great answer to Bridget as well. Yeah, the FMCSA handbook or the FMCSA website. You go to their motor carrier safety planner page. It explains a lot of this in plain English. That, but I don't want to get too far off topic. And the here, FMCSA so, uh, is a division of the DOT, or under the authority the, of the DOT, Department of Transportation. Yes, they're they're an agency of the United States Department of Transportation. They're just like you got the Federal Railway Administration that handles trains, Federal Aviation that handles airplanes, FMCSA handles motor carriers, so they handle trucking companies. Gotcha. So. Uh, I'm going to ask the question because I know like a checklist, this is why I tried to put that blog together as a, as a form of a checklist. We all love a checklist. If you started with a business plan as number one, what could you put as number two? Is there a logical well, number two? Yes, there there is. And that's going to be one of two things that's going to be different for you if you're going to be operating vehicles that require a commercial driver's license and you don't have your CDL, start training for that because in most states it's going to take you a couple of months to obtain a commercial driver's license, especially now with everything being shut down for COVID. Um, make sure you've contacted Lionel or somebody like him to price your insurance before you go invest thirty or $40,000 into a truck and find out you cannot afford to insure it. So step number two or 2A would be have the proper credentials, which would be the license you need for what you're going to operate, your medical certification to make sure you actually are medically qualified because there are certain pre-existing conditions that disqualify you even for non-CDL required trucks and, and then make sure you can afford insurance. Uh, at the same time, while you're doing that, the parallel 2C would be start to figure out where your customer base is going to be. Right. Now, I've already messed up the checklist in the live chat, but it's okay. <laughs> it really is tough. It gets real gangly. It's like a it's like a mobile that has spinning parts and different levels and mm -hmm. maybe. <laughs> and Ty probably has the best answers for a lot of this stuff because a lot of it is just running the business, which is his expertise. And where do we where do we go? I mean, you don't just wake up one day and decide you're going to open a pharmacy. So you don't just go. Yes, yes indeed, Brian. Uh, running on the circumstance of what you're saying, unfortunately, that's how I started my business. And I learned the hard way. So I'm not on here even pretending to be an expert. I go by the mistakes that I've made, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> well, same that, here. <laughs> that's and, and, and you know, that sums it up for exactly. We are uh, 
the, the the goal is to to really get real about the information. This is this is a lot of of tough information, and it doesn't stay the same, right? Things change. Yes, indeed. Oh, Updates, all the time, yes, right? All the time. I'm just getting ready now to figure out exactly what the new hours of service rules that go online September 29th actually mean. They're very minute changes to the rules, but. You know, you change one little line and it's the butterfly effect. It can have unintended consequences down the line elsewhere. So these rules change all the time. I get alerts from FMCSA daily on minor little changes to how they are interpreting something. They get a new person in a position, get a new uh, administrator, and they start looking at things differently, such as the high mount overhang issue we've had for several years. That all boils down to a incorrect interpretation of the law that they are enforcing. We're not going to get off down that rabbit hole, but yes, things change all the time. Notice how the levels of liability change coming with these new hours of service laws coming too. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm looking at what's going to happen. Jay had talked on it about it earlier in the show with the uh, proposal that's cleared the house now to raise the uh, interstate motor carriers liability from the current 750000 to $2 million. I'm glad that uh, the senator from my home state in Pennsylvania didn't get his way and raise it up to almost $5 million, but still a doubling of what the base insurance is going to be because we need $1 million as car haulers. A doubling of that is probably going to result in a 30% or more premium increase. Uh, and as we have people exiting the market, I can see it getting very difficult. It's already difficult. I can see it getting very difficult to get someone to write a $2 million liability for a new entry. Uh, what do you think about that, Lionel? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, 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 you know, I'm, I'm leading my clients into it now. I'm having those discussions and uh, preparing them for it. Uh, I'm trying to get them educated up. I, I'm referring them back to Ty to increase their circumstance of contact with direct customers to work on the, the possibility of getting higher rates instead of relying on the boards. Um, I mean, I, they, they have to get it from everywhere that they possibly can because the insurance co- industry is not going to give it to them. You, you bring up an interesting point, too, on better customers, and it's so much more than just a better rate per mile. If you're hauling a different type of vehicle, a lot of us make our money. I started hauling salvage. A lot of us make our money hauling salvage out of IAA and Copart. Well, I know that I had a hard time getting insurance for that because they look at salvage cars different than they look at lease turn-ins, that they look at new cars. And we all talk about diminished value or constructive total loss on new cars, but I've had a lot of people have a problem with salvage because when the car does get damaged in transport, it's so hard to prove what you're actually responsible for. And, well, just today I had a phone call from someone that had oil leaking out of a vehicle. They got a $500 fine in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for oil leaking out of a vehicle they were transferring, wow. and it left a little little drop wow. on the ground. Um, That's so, again, to manage DOT compliance – Maybe we want to look at the type of vehicles we're hauling so we don't get citations for oil drops coming on the ground or loose dunnage. You've got a piece of the car that's flapping in the breeze and a motor carrier officer pulls you over, stuff like that. We might want to consider exactly what we're hauling, what type of cars even, as part of our safety and compliance plan. And we could even get into occupational injury or workers' comp if you have employees where you got, you're working around fork trucks and stuff. That could be more dangerous than just pulling a car out of a dealership parking lot and driving it up the ramps. Again, different things we can look at for risk management, but that's not what we're here for tonight on this, uh, on this show. But it's such a good point because so often uh, I, I think that, yeah, regulation talk – you know, it's like that fly buzzing around, and you just want it out of the way. And let me get back to, um, I'm going to IAA. I don't have time to talk about DOT and regulations. And we, you know, on Thursdays at noon with Sue, we look at every car. What is it? Where is it going? Who are we picking up for? And then on Fridays, we're talking about dealers, auctions. It matters. The car and the business you're doing, it's not just the money. How long is it going to take? 
And is it is it worth it in the long run? So I love you're, that you're Brian, correct. I love that. Brian brings up an interesting point in regards to that because workers' compensation comes into to the mix. Uh, uh, it should come into the mix a lot more so than it does because, uh, you know, just like I said, I've chewed a lot of the same dirt that you guys have chewed out there that are driving these trucks and picking these cars up. And uh, nobody's talking about it, but, you know, to go to actually go get the car itself at the auction or at the dealership, the perils and everything that's involved with that puts the person at uh, risk in terms of where they're going, how they're going there. Uh, I witnessed an accident on site up at uh, Mannheim in Pennsylvania. And uh, if you guys have been there before, it's a nasty hill uh, right in back of the auction, you know, going away and coming to the uh, the A the A lot back there, and I mean it was it was horrible. But uh, there's also people uh, taking the risk of getting hit by cars, the guys going too fast on the auction uh, um, parking lots and stuff like that. It's 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 incredible. But you spend a significant amount of time out there in that uh, in the auctions picking those cars up. You pick up ten cars, you can spend heck, four or five hours getting those in and out of the auction and don't even realize that uh, that risk is, is out there. Well, and that's a good point. That word comp is not one of my favorite topics either, but Lionel's right. This is, as an owner-operator, guys, we call them one-chuck truck. I got my one truck and my one trailer. I look at, you know, I tell guys, you might want to look into Affleck, you might want to call Lionel, you might want to do something, but work comp is important for you because you're the only guy running. Oh, absolutely. Replace your income if you get hurt and or you can get a situation right. like I we had a small, we had a small fleet. I had a driver loading a car in upstate New York. He was shoveling it out. It was wintertime shoveling snow out from in front of it. He collapsed and had a heart attack. He survived, but he had a heart attack and our workers compensation paid for that because he was on the job. He was working. These are perils we face every day that could happen to any one of us. Uh, but again, I don't want to get down that rabbit hole right now. But again, it's so, I mean, it, you know, you po make another, because the, the FMCSA regulations, it is a constellation. And you must see every star to understand what you're looking at. Yes, well, good description. We're going back to, I want to start a car hauling business, right? So, you know, I was wondering, do you talk to Brian, Lionel, or Ty? Who do you talk to first? That's a great question, uh, <laughs> but honestly, I'm going to say you so that they can build their business plan and you educate them that they need a good insurance agent in their corner and they need someone that understands DOT regulations. And then when I scare them with what the rules are, they can decide if they want to stay in this or not. Oh, man. I yeah, concur. and I tell them that too up front. I'm like, okay, when you talk to Brian, <laughs> be ready. <laughs> And he's going to scare you, then I'm going to scare you with the insurance quote. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, when you get to Lionel, you really have a lot of tips and diapers or something. <laughs> well, so the thing is, so what I do, and again, you know, Jay made a point earlier. He said, hey, we're not out here running around, telling everybody, you know, look at all the $100 bills in my car hauling business. You know, that's not us. And oh, man. We're, we're a little more real. And so <clears throat> talking to people, and I, I say this all the time, man. You talk to me, it's not a, you're not going to get a canned speech. You're just, you're not, because it's not one size fits all. It's about you. That's what it's about. It's about you. Who are you? What do you want? And how do you think you're going to get it? You know, you somebody, you got the idea. Where did it come from? Mm -hmm. Who do you know? You Actually, know, it's all, it's, go ahead. I wrote that down. Where, remember how we were talking about life of a car, the car is born? Yeah. Where did drivers come from? <laughs> That's a good question, too. Uh, they're just created. Car and I know haulers, it's a weird question, but... No, the car haulers, they're just created out of poof. <laughs> hey, go go load that. Okay. <laughs> right? I don't know where they come from. But, okay, so yeah. back to hauling. I want to start my own car hauling company. Who do we talk to? Well, as we talk about it, I would, you know... I'm getting better and better about repeating myself like a broken record. There's one question with two questions in it. Can you live six months without a check? And who is your customer? 
That's if you're starting. That's if you're going to start. So we're, let's clarify. What are we talking about? We're talking about, I want to be a car hauler. I don't know anything about it. I want to be a car hauler. What do I do? So I say, first, can you live six months without a check? Second, who's your customer? Fair? Very fair. They're, they're great starting points because so many of us start. I started my company undercapitalized. <laughs> I, I got this idea. My dad owned tow trucks. He got out of that before I got into it. I, I worked as a company employee for Auto Placement Center and then Copart. And I got this idea. I'm going to start my own car hauling business. And yeah, I definitely was undercapitalized. You can survive it, but I don't recommend it. So you have very great points there. So you knew vehicles needed to get moved, and you knew you had the kind of mechanical knowledge, right, to follow through. Yes, I was a company driver before I started, but so many of the people I talk to today have never been a trucker before. They have this romanticized idea of what trucking and being their own boss out on the road really is. That's where I. That's why I. Yeah, because I, I. I want to validate my own question because like. Ty, you've had like, I don't know, didn't you have a guy that was a doctor or something? Yeah, I've had doctors, I've had carpenters, I've had, I talked to talked to a guy today, we scheduled an employee, Alex, I'm looking forward to talking to him, he just wants to buy a truck, and he even said, he said, hey, I'll give you a hundred bucks, if you talk me out of it, it's the best hundred bucks I've ever spent. <laughs> <laughs> he said that, not me. <laughs> yes. I mean, the reality of it is, Jay, what you're saying is absolutely right. Period. Because Say when I again. when I go to the FMCSA website, I'm thinking that this it's that site has nothing to do with making money. That's no, it only doesn't. spending it, money. Yes. It, well, I, actually, I won't say that. I'll challenge you on that. That it All can right, make good. you money. Uh, now, I'm a different breed of safety and compliance consultant because I'm not one that's going to tell you we have to comply with the rules and they're there for your own good. Because okay. compliance does not always equal safety. Compliance does not always equal safety. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of rules in that little green book that make absolutely no sense or have no impact on safety one bit, such as we're grown up intelligent people that can decide that we're going to exceed hours of service by 15 minutes because I can get to a safe place to sleep instead of parking on the side of the highway. However, how many trucks do we see that literally just pulled over on the shoulder of an interstate highway because their little ELD clock told them it's time to take a break and it happens. Poor planning, blah, blah, blah. But the FNCSA the thought of that. Yes. No, <laughs> we can't always I hate plan, that. but yeah. You can't plan hey, everything. Yeah. And we do. We also we do see trucks on the side of the highway, and it's kind of scary because you don't see them until the last second. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. to some degree. You could never slow down if that, I don't know. Anyways. Now, the, where I do say that the FMCSA can make you money, if you run your business to be safe and compliant, maintain your equipment so you're always going to get a clean inspection when you pull through the scale house. Better maintained equipment costs less in the long run. That's why they have predictive yeah. schedules for preventative maintenance at the large fleets. And simply by being in compliance with DOT and avoiding the violations, you avoid unnecessary insurance premium increases, then guys like Lionel can get you a better rate when they shop you around in year two or three. You also, you also, uh, uh, you also avoid picking bad drivers that are going to cause you problems because if you actually do the background check, you're required to pre-hire. You do your drug testing if you're in CDL vehicles, which I recommend even if you're not. And you do your clearinghouse check, you can find someone that's jumping from job to job trying to stay ahead of that positive drug test. We don't need another driver in our truck that's going to be drunk and run over motorcyclists up in New Hampshire, give us all a black eye. We don't need that driver that has a bunch of crashes we didn't know about because we didn't spend the $10, $10 to run his pre-employment screening program check with the FMCSA to see that he had a whole bunch of accidents or DOT violations in his previous companies, which shows that he's somebody that doesn't give a crap about safety. So they can make us or save us some money. Right. Um, 
boy, I had several thoughts there. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> somebody else like, take over. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Every time you talk to me, you get an idea for ten more shows. So come on. Well, and then and on top of it, Josh just said uh, he wants to talk about hours of service, and um, we can either do some hours of service. You've also got the CDL flow chart, which is that's pretty interesting. Um, mm -hmm. What direction should we go in, guys? We almost need a wheel well, O top. I'll, music. I'll, yeah. I'll give you uh, one for, for, for new startups just into that segment there and what Brian brought up. And this, this actually happened to a guy that uh, I just got in his insurance policy and he just started up, uh, did everything he was supposed to, started running. And uh, he went out there. He did not file his six-day prior uh time card or or what he did the prior six days and he put him out of service right on the spot wow yep that's so a normal day, out of service mm -hmm. right and, and the day right. you go out the, the day you go out remember guys always backlog six to seven days to allow that dot inspector to know that you were not in service the day you go out Sure, and you know what? That's a great segue. We, we wow. could we could have started with hours of service or with the CDL flow chart, but let's do hours of service while we're on that because uh, that's another area that a lot of owner operators don't think about. And if you want to comply to the letter of the law when you're po sitting there polishing the aluminum on your fuel tanks and polishing your wheels or you're doing your own oil change to save money at the house, that is on-duty, not driving time that eats into your 60 or 70-hour weekly total. So just like not having your previous seven days with you when you're on the, side, on the road, uh, some of these officers will ask you, well, the truck's awful clean. Oh, yeah, I'm proud of it. I did that aluminum myself. Oh, well, when did you do it? Oh, when I was on my 34-hour break. Well, then you weren't on your 34-hour break if they want to be a prick about it. So there are so many different things to look at here. But hours of service are simple, but I don't want to get into the nuts and bolts of them tonight because they are changing in September. The biggest thing to remember is whether you have a CDL or not, unless you're running locally, the short haul, the rules are exactly the same with one minor exception. But if you're running typical over the road where you don't come home every night, the rules are the same whether you're in that hot shot or you're in the uh, nine car stinger. Yeah. And that's 11 hours of driving time in a 14 hour window, 10 hours consecutive off duty in between sleeper or off duty, off duty. And your 30 minute milk and cookie break after or within the first eight hours or before you exceed eight hours of drive time. Fair and enough I summary. I, well, and I think that uh, that's a misconception I think I've heard several times is the thinking that the CDL affects the hours of service. Correct. And the only way the CDL affects hours of service, if you do not have a CDL and you leave from and return to the same place every night, so you're a local driver, you're allowed to have a – you're allowed to have two of those 16-hour long days instead of one – and if you're running time card, not logbook at all, so you're running short haul, you're a 150 air mile radius instead of the 100 air mile radius. Again, that's all changing at the end of September, but you have, uh, um, and looking at the live chat, yes, if you exceed the 100 air mile radius, you do need an ELD. Um, but yeah, you're having a CDL or not, having a pickup truck or a Peterbilt tractor does not make a difference whether you need an ELD or hours of service compliance. Uh, with the trucks I sell and deliver, I've got a little Ram 5500. I'm taking the Massachusetts out of Illinois tomorrow, and I have to run a logbook in that. It's a Laramie extended cab truck, but it's over 10,000 pounds. It's a commercial vehicle for what I'm doing with it. And, uh, yes, Michael, you're right. There are definitely oil field hours of service, agriculture exemptions. They all do get interesting. There's a lot of differences there. So hours of service, really, it's the same no matter what you're running. ELD requirements are the same regardless of the truck you're hauling cars with. Um, now, we have that CDL flow chart, Jay, if you want to bring that up. Yeah, that, let's do it. it that, 
that is a great kickoff point to determine whether you need a CDL, but it also determines whether you need a portion registration in most states, whether you need fuel tax decals for your IFTA account. It, it helps you make a lot of decisions on your business model. Now, before we go into the flow chart, I want to, I want to set this up a little bit. Okay. Because I'm the guy that gets the call all the time. So I want to know <clears throat> from Lionel and uh, Brian, I want to know, is it, as we, as we step, start stepping into this, you know, is it better to have a 350, 450, 550, or medium, what I call medium duty, which is the 14,000 to 26,000 or Peterbilt? Which one do I need, guys? Well, when I discuss the circumstances of the truck, I look at it like eating a whale. Uh, you know, you want to eat a little bit at a time. And uh, most of the guys' participation in the industry itself, I, I go on the basis of their experience with that. Uh, I don't suggest that they go in on the large scale because obviously you got a, you have a higher obligation in regards to the finance, and also there's a you know there's a bigger piece of equipment as far as safety is concerned, also, and you have more to watch at the same time that you're going down the road, uh, meaning uh, checking your straps. Uh, how many cars you're checking, uh, things to that nature. So I, I, I kind of suggest guys, if they don't have any experience at all, try to get in on the low side, uh, maybe a, a older truck, run local, maybe be if you're close to the a couple of the options and stuff, uh, start building your client base and then start building out. But there, are, you know, there's always that customer who wants to, I want to, you know, I want to get the 5,500 or, I want to get the nine car hauler, hauler or ten car hauler. Uh, I end up having a few more discussions with them to make sure that they're um, stable enough to handle the regulation that they're going to put on them, and uh, the number of things that that person has to watch as they uh, pursue the business itself. Okay. All all excellent points, uh, and. My answer will be like they always are. It depends. Uh, depends on your financial situation because it is easier to go finance a uh, 3500 or an F350, 450 in your personal name and personal credit than it is to buy a Class 7 or 8 truck. From the overall cost of operation point of view, I think even when you want to do three or four car carrier hot shots, a class seven single axle tractor is probably the most cost effective way to go. That said, like Lionel said, if you're brand new at this and you've never been a truck driver before, it can be intimidating and it can be a little bit of a handicap to learn how to drive a truck like that where a pickup truck, you're familiar with it, you probably have driven a pickup truck somewhere in your life before. Although I will say on the safety side, the large truck has better stopping, better overall performance than the little truck does personally, but I've been a truck guy my entire life. I learned how to drive a road ranger at eight years old, moving stuff around my dad's parking lot. I've always gone with the larger trucks. That said, there is a lot to be said for starting with a small truck and building your way up there. Um, I lost my train of thought there. Well, it's an uh, there are... it's, it's a paradox, isn't it? I mean, mm. because it some of it's about what you're comfortable with, but some of it's not necessarily what you're comfortable mm -hmm. with, what your business. It's interesting, and all and all and any entrepreneur is pushed on certain issues. Yeah. But in the case of safety, you don't want to be so pushed that you're that you wreck. Oh, absolutely. And we see the pictures daily of the wedges that have had accidents that have rolled over because the driver a didn't lot. know how to load it properly, went yeah. into a corner. There's one up here on I-57 today that just rolled over here in Illinois, not too far from where I am. Uh, that happens with large trucks, too. Tractor trailers have accidents every day. And if you're not familiar with air brakes and you're not familiar with balancing them with the electric brakes on your trailer, you may be setting yourself up for disaster. And this is why I don't, I have a hard time recommending someone jump right into a full tractor trailer without some experience. I have a hard time recommending someone jump into a dually and a trailer without some truck driving experience because you're now pulling 26 to 40,000 pounds down the road and maybe all you drove before this was your Ford Escort to go back and forth to work. So you really do need some practice and some experience. Um, 
I, not to discourage anybody, but I do tend to recommend somebody work for somebody for a little while first, make sure they even like the lifestyle. It's, it, it's a big investment, and that truck is a tool, so don't fall in love with a particular truck because it's pretty, but that truck's a tool. But it's a big investment to buy a truck and then find out that you don't like driving 600 miles a day, six days a week, and sleeping in the back seat of your pickup when you can't afford a hotel or can't find a hotel room for the night. It, there's a lot to think about here. That's a great recommendation, Brian. <laughs> That's the best ever. I love that one. Josh, just, that one, Brian. <laughs> Josh just said, please discourage them. There are people that just don't understand. Ty, I feel like we do quite a bit of discouragement. Well, I, do we I not? think we're pretty real. Yeah, we're very real. You know, and, and I, like tonight, uh, the two guys that I've coached, uh, AJ and Pete, <clears throat> I mean, super smart guys, real. I mean, that was, it was a great conversation because it wasn't me putting out, here's your plan, go do it. It was about me listening to what they have, what they think they have. Should we get a small truck, a medium truck, a big truck? How are we going to, how much? And start getting into numbers and projections and performance. And, you know, those, those are fun. But back to what we're talking about, if, because this, this is 101, right? We're right. back to 101. Good point. So, so let's, make, let's keep it real basic. Let's keep it real simple. Re, I want real basic, cars. real simple? Yeah. I want to haul did, cars. What do I do? Well, where are you going to haul the cars from? Do you have an auction close by, or are you just looking to grab something off a board and go? Because that's going to tell you what type of equipment you need, because you're not going to make as much running three cars from here to California as you are running three cars in a constant loop back and forth from your auction with some dedicated dealers. So, again, back to your business plan. Question. I'll bet you there's somebody. There's somebody right now that's thinking, what's hot shot? I keep hearing it. I don't know what it is. I know what it is, but I'm pointing. I'm. I'm going to ask the stupid question. What's hot shot? Great point, because we use words and terminology that we in the industry know. But hot shot basically is. It's a term that comes from the oil field runners from years of the past when a part of oil drilling rig went down and a part had to get there immediately. And the hot shot was the guy with the pickup truck and the trailer that could throw that on at a moment's notice. He answered his phone 24-7 and just ran without regard to anything to get it there. So that's where the term hot shot comes from. Hot shot, as we use it today, are the guys with the pickup trucks and trailers behind them that haul anywhere from two to four or five cars. Right. Great question, Michael. Who's your customer? That's probably the important one. Yeah, probably the one thing I would say to add to the hot shot is, in my opinion, it should be short runs. And in my opinion, 300 miles or less when you call it a hot shot. But I know now it's kind of gray. You know, it's a small truck and a small trailer, so I'm a hot shot. But to me, it's yeah, short you're, miles, you're long miles. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Hot shots should be similar to the expedite freight, the guys with the uh, single axle box trucks with sleepers on them. It is stuff that is last minute, high paying freight. Your hot shot truck should pay more. Yeah. And that's why a hot shot gets frustrated when he's competing with an over the road nine car. But, and part of, if you get back into definitions and basics, well, you shouldn't be trying to compete with somebody who can take two to three times your volume, right? No, you should be looking lower. for your target customer that needs these three cars, and he needs them now because of aging, because a car loses 10 to $12 of value a day. His floor plan financing costs him 3 to $5 on that car. The hot shot should be looking for the guy that the car sat on the board for three days and hasn't moved, and I can say I'm naming my price, and I'll get it there for you in 48 hours and make you happy. That is where the money is in that. That is what that should be. Hey Amen. That was awesome. good, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this I've, is been, I've been around this a very long time. Well, here's, a, right, here, 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 here's a bonus question then. What's a floor plan? And what does that have to do with car hauling, right? 
Floor plan is the financing that a dealer pays to buy that car. He buys it on credit. He has so many days that he doesn't pay a dime for it if he sells the car in the first week to 10 days or sometimes extended as much as 30 days. Look at the time it takes to get a car transported there. That's why good dealers look at how long a car sits on their lot and why you can get some severe discounts on something that sat on that 30 to 45 day mark on the lot when you're buying it because he's getting ready to start paying more per day for that car the longer it ages. Mm, beautiful. Wow. Sweet. Okay, so we're 101. We're kind of talking, probably people are like, whoa, floor plan, but I want to start a car hauling company. So we talked to Ty. Ty asked you, can you live six months without a check, and who's your customer? Next is equipment, Right. So now let's get let's skip over into that chart now, Jay. Awesome, man. Awesome. Okay, all right. So I'm going to get that chart going. Okay, this is a PDF. This is a CDL flow chart. And um, Brian shared this with me. And now we are sharing it with you. And is this the right one, Brian? Yes, it is. And this chart will help you make so many decisions. First of all, it'll help you know if the truck you already own and the trailer you want to pull, you're licensed properly to drive it when it gets into commercial use. Because in most states, anybody can hop in a dually and pull a, a camper trailer or even pull a, a, a wedge trailer hauling their own personal car collection and not require a Class A license at all. As soon as you start doing it for any type of business purpose, whether you're being directly compensated for it, such as being paid to move the car, or you're the dealer that owns the truck and trailer and you're moving the cars back to your dealership then you get in the commercial driver's license so this flow chart right here will help you determine if your truck and trailer that you're planning on buying become a vehicle that requires a cdl then you ask yourself do i have a cdl yes or no am i qualified to get one have i had something happen in my past that says i'm disqualified from having a cdl such as two serious traffic offenses within a three-year period or have you had a recent dui and now you're not qualified uh so you decide can i get a cdl do i want to get a cdl then this also helps you determine all right do i need a uh a portion plate, fuel tax, do I want to track the miles I drive in every state and deal with all that nonsense? This helps you determine all of that just by following this flow chart to see if your truck and your trailer requires a CDL. So much else is triggered off of this. Hey, Ty, Brian, Ty. I got, well, so <clears throat> you got to remember, you're talking to a lot of people like me. So everything that you just said was this. So I just know, I, blah, blah, blah. What, what is a GCWR? What is, I just, I bought an F-350, Brian. Can I put a three-car trailer behind it? And can I go to work? <laughs> yeah. Very, very good point. Very good point. I, I tend to skip the simple sometimes. So gross combined weight rating. That is what the manufacturer of your truck declares that it is rated to haul, uh, often interchanged or confused with gross vehicle weight rating, GVWR. So we look at in the door of your F-350, there'll be a little sticker. There'll be a little sticker that has what the front axle is rated for, the rear axle, and combined is rated for on that truck. It'll have a number. Uh, 99% of them are going to be 11,000 pounds or higher if we're dealing with a 350 or bigger truck. You look at that number, then you look at the trailer you want to buy, which will have a very similar plate on the left front corner of the trailer somewhere with a weight rating on the trailer. It'll show what each axle is weighted for, and it'll show the overall gross weight of that trailer. Do not confuse this with what it actually physically weighs if you parked it on a scale. It is what the designed weight is by the manufacturer. So you look at those two numbers and you follow this chart. So is the two together when you add the truck and trailer greater than 26,001 pounds? And is the trailer greater than 10,001 pounds? If yes, then it needs a class A license. Do you follow me so far? Yes. I think that's okay. a that's a 
that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm going to add just a little something in here, and this is where a lot of guys get confused because some believe that the, the uh, they they get they don't go by the combination of the ratings of the vehicles that are that are involved. That ten thousand pound weight underweight requirement for 20, the twenty six thousand pound guys out there. Uh, if that trailer's rated above ten thousand pounds and you pull the DOT inspector over and it's rated 12,000, he's going to put you out of service for driving a commercial vehicle. So be very aware that the rating on the trailer is 10,000 pounds and under, not the weight of the truck and trailer together. They're not going to do that. They're going to pull out a separate combination because it is a combination load. They, They look at each one of them together correct and Mm -hmm. in 49 of the 50 states they look at it exactly as is on this flow chart in the state of california they could care less what anything is the moment that trailer exceeds 10,000 pounds weighted registered declared weight or actual weight um otherwise the trigger a class say you can have a 14,000 pound trailer and a 10,000 pound truck you're 24 you're perfectly fine on a C license uh, but as soon as you take that truck and trailer together they exceed 2601 and the trailer exceeds 10,000 declared weight not actual weight on the scale then you trigger that CDL. So many guys say, mm-hmm. well, it's at 12,000 pounds, but I'm only weighing 24 on the whole combination. I'm okay. Incorrect. Other states also go as far as even if your weight ratings stay where they're supposed to be, if the truck, if the load of the truck trailer and load mm-hmm. exceed, then they will, then they will say you need your class A CDL as well. Um, now, I want to break in. I see two questions in the chat. Jay's asking, yeah. how would you know if you need an apportion plate versus weighted tag? Weighted tag is a state-specific uh, registration in some states, such as the state of New Mexico has their weight distance tag. That question is going to depend upon the state you live in that you're registering your truck in, unless your truck exceeds 26,001 pounds what you want a registered weight for for the truck and trailer it's going to tow then that's an apportion plate so you can enter other neighboring states so weighted tag is a a, say North Carolina, New Mexico certain states have uh, what they call the weighted tag it's special for trucks that are heavier than a normal pickup truck you would use that tag if you're staying in one of those states but you're only staying in that state, you're not going across state lines, if you're crossing state lines and the truck exceeds well truck and trailer together is going to exceed 26,001 pounds you need your apportioned registration I got a question yes how long does it take to get a CDL depends on the state you're in but you're looking at a minimum of two weeks Except right now, because between now and September 30th, the FMCSA has a waiver on the 14-day waiting period. But if you're really good and you know your stuff, you can walk in and take your general knowledge test on a Monday. And then under normal rules, you have 14 days you have to wait before you can go take your skills and road test. So that means you have a minimum of 15 days from the day you get your permit to the day you can take your skills and road test, then go back to your DMV at day 16 and get your new license issued to you. Mm -hmm. And if you master the knowledge test up front and you hit every maneuver and the road test perfect, which doesn't happen all that often. I've been a Commonwealth of Pennsylvania CDL examiner through the third party testing program since 1993. And I have about a 70% fail rate for the people to come through to take their skills test. They get something wrong out of the basic control skills, the pre-trip inspection or the on highway 70% of the time on their first shot through. So realistically to get your CDL, give yourself about six to eight weeks and that's if you're not going to a fully involved program that's if you're going to do it on your own with a buddy's truck or you're going to take one of these cdl a week classes that i don't normally recommend to people the only time i recommend those go get your cdl in a day class is if you've already been driving your hot shot and you just want to make that next step up so you're already familiar with the equipment and how to drive 
But the short answer is, Ty, you can do it in a minimum of 15 days if you're really good. Okay. So the reason I'm asking is because <clears throat> I get the question all the time, do I need a CDO? And my new answer lately has been, yes, just go get one. And the reason I'm saying that is because I just sat here and listened to you and looked at the chart. And I can tell you, I still don't know what you just said. Now, that's because of my personality, <laughs> right? That's uh -huh. just me. <laughs> but I know there's a lot it, of guys that want to haul cars that are a lot like me where they're like, can we just, so I don't have to deal with that, right? So is it not right or wrong to say, hey, why don't you just go get it? Be done. I would say go get it 90% of the time. A, the insurance company is going to look at you as a more qualified driver if you have a CDL and it's clean. B, you're not going to have to worry about being over by a couple of pounds. I had a customer put out a service in New Hampshire the other day because he had been in an accident. Somebody rear-ended him, and they replaced their trailer. The new trailer came in at 14,200 pounds on the sticker, and they didn't notice it. They had been through inspected a couple times in other states. No one noticed it. An officer in New Hampshire noticed that he now was 26,200 pounds on his combination and put him out of service for not having his CDL. To, he had to separate the truck and trailer and get towed out of the inspection point, wow. leave the trailer to the customer, and then go back up the next day with the re-weighted re weight sticker for that trailer and put it on there so he could drive it home. That's insane. And now that said, when you get your CDL, remember there are a couple things that happens. You are presumed to be a professional driver by the officers, so they're going to expect you to know these regulations more than they expect the guy without a CDL. You have a lower threshold for drunk driving if you happen to be someone that likes to drink a beer. Um, you generally um i lost my train of thought here uh but the important thing to remember is the officers are going to look at you and hold you to a higher standard i found that to be true on the side of the road um wow but you definitely want to get your cdl if you can because it also allows you to expand your business later quicker as you find if you're really good at selling and you're growing then you say oh crap i don't have two months to stop and go to school now I've got it done up front. It's a tool. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's perfect. That is exactly what I'm like. Okay, if you really want to get in this, you can get, you can live six months without a check. You know who your customer is. Now watch this. If you go out and you do what I'm saying, three to six months, you will need another truck and another trailer, and it will have to haul more than three or four. I promise. Yeah. So go ahead and do it. Just get it out of the way. Be done. We don't have to understand. No, once you Another topic, guys, uh, the same topic, but the, the, another part of that conversation is actually going to the auction and trying to match up the cars that actually keep you underweight. That is a nightmare. Oh, man. <laughs> yes, sir. And it's a nightmare for everybody else in the ecosystem. Yeah. It sucks for the time. people on the phone. It, it, sucks for the, it sucks for everybody. It, it can suck for the customer. It's awful. Okay, so we're back to 101. <clears throat> Can you live six months without a check? Who's your customer? Do, you, do I need a CDO? I think there's four of us on here. <clears throat> you don't have to have one, but I think if – raise your right hand if you think it might as well. Go ahead and get one if you're really thinking about the business. It, I Absolutely. Think, and I think there's a lot of ways to make an analogy. It would be like, I want to be a lifeguard, but I don't – I don't know. I'm not sure what the – but the – it seems to me as just a guy sitting at a desk and on a phone that that would be a level of certification and knowledge and ability that gets you to the point where you're really growing a business in transport. Ab absolutely. Uh, it, it's no different than... You have your prize 69 Chevy Chevelle that got damaged, and you want to have it fixed at a body shop. Are you going to go to Mako and have them blow some paint on it, or are you going to go to a local collision center that has ICAR certified technicians that have taken training and agree to abide by a certain set of standards to do that repair? Or are you going to have Sparky come out and be your electrician when something goes wrong in your house, or are you going to find a licensed electrical contractor in your town to come do that work? 
it, it really that's what it comes down to is you want to be a professional it's the first step to being a professional driver very good michael <laughs> yeah michael right exactly there you go okay so um, we got that and by, go ahead no i just want to say this bridget asked another really good question where do you find dot officers I mean, are they you find them at, Yes, they are. But <laughs> seriously, most likely you find them at the port of entry when you're crossing state lines in a lot of the uh, southern states that have port of entries. You find them in the way stations, you see those signs, when lights are flashing, all trucks must enter. Uh, you find them in every state police barracks in the country. There's always a DOT officer at one of them if you want to go talk to them and ask them some questions. But really, you find them in the areas where trucks run most frequently. So you find them on the side of the interstates in the way stations and port of entries. Uh, and there are a lot of the old school ones that want to teach you. They want to educate you. So they're not all awful. You can ask them questions and you don't have to be afraid of them. I just shared a map. Um, drive wise, I believe is a uh, yeah, it's a bypass scale yes. solution, right? And they have a pretty good website with dots, many dots. Yeah, and if you open the Trucker's the Path app, if truckers you open path. the Trucker's Path Path app on your phone, that'll show you where most of the way stations are, and it'll even show you which ones are open or closed and their history. Yeah. That is a good one. Trucker's Path. Yeah, I mean, there's some great apps for that stuff. Um, awesome. Okay, Ty, you had something you were going to say. You let me say that. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. I'm just keep recapping because I, I'm thinking, like, if I'm watching this show, I really don't know what you guys are talking about. So I love that. I want to wanna haul cars. <laughs> Who is my customer? How much money do I need to get started? Well, f before we can answer that, we need to know some things, right? And Okay, how's your credit? So this is where Lionel comes in. Lionel, I need an insurance quote. Ty said I got to get an insurance quote and gave me your number. I need how much is it going to cost me, Lionel? Your credit is detrimental because just like getting into the uh, hauling business itself, uh, that is a process to be prepared for your insurance quote in the same manner. Uh, you have to be financially fit. When asked for an insurance quote, because your uh, credit holds a precedence in everything, uh, it's right up there with your driving record. Uh, there are some alternatives if you get to that point. If you do not have good credit, uh, you could choose a partner who has good credit and go into business with them. It's an alternative. Also, where are you doing your business? Are you conducting business out of uh, a city zone or are you in a rural area? because they're going to make the determination of the amount of insurance that they're going to charge you based on where you're starting your business from. Uh, like I said, I, I, there's a lot more, to, uh, a few more things that go on that list. Uh, Auto.hauler.com is my website. Anybody wants to get free 12 steps for that, they can go there and uh, I'll be more than glad to put your email in and I'll send that out to you. But uh, the, the main thing of it is, is just to uh, follow those few steps at the beginning as far as your credit is concerned. Uh, also, obviously, you know that'll fall in line with your equipment. Also, if you're purchasing it uh, and you're financing it, also, you're going to get better rates and stuff at the uh, the truck dealerships and the uh, trailer dealerships themselves. But definitely take your credit into consideration when you decide to get in this business. Okay, so I'm going to pause yes. you right there, and I'm going, to, I'm going to point something out for everybody that's listening, okay? I asked Lionel, hey, Lionel, I want to be a car hauler. I need insurance, okay? How much is it going to cost me? Do you notice how Lionel didn't say anything about dollars, and he didn't say anything about equipment until the very end? Did anybody catch that? He had nothing to say about, well, hey, what kind of truck and trailer you got? He didn't, that wasn't his first question. His first question wasn't, what kind of truck and trailer do you have? His first question wasn't, where are you going to run? His, what was the first thing he said? What was it, Lionel? Um, I believe it was, uh, make sure you make sure your credit's in, in shape. Right there. That was the first thing that Lionel said. Now, what does that tell you about this business? It's going to require money. Okay. <laughs> Lionel said credit. What did uh, Brian, Brian, I think you even said credit somewhere in there. I know that's always the first thing I talk about, your financial health. How healthy are you financially? Guys, I'm telling you, 
I've made plenty, and I mean lots, big, expensive mistakes, <laughs> huge. And I'm telling you, there is nothing inexpensive about this business. Nothing. There's nothing. Just today, we're you, talking you about. Can only wish the, you can only wish to contain the calls. This is what you can do. <laughs> we were talking to somebody today. I said, okay, let's just say your insurance, let's say you get lucky, Lionel. Let's say you get lucky, and Lionel gives you a quote for two grand a month. We won't talk about a down payment. We'll just, Lionel likes you. There's all, everything fell. You got good credit. 2000 a month. Okay. Break that. Let's break that down into what's that a week? So 2000 times 12 is 24,000 a year, right? Now divide 24,000 by 52. That should put you right around $500 a week. Okay. Well, that's not bad. I can do that. Ty said I can make three to five grand if I do it right. Well, I thought I could make 12. No, three to five. <laughs> so let's say you can make three to five and it's a break your insurance. That's only 500 a week. Now let's assume we can run maybe 600 miles a day. Five, that's 3,000 miles a week. Is that possible, Brian? Yeah, that's reasonable if everything goes right. It's not going to go right. So let's just ratchet yeah. that back and call it 400. Let's run five days a week just for fun. That's uh, 400 times five is 2,000 miles a week. Is that right? Okay. Yes. What's the average fuel mile? I don't care if you got a 350 Dodge or 350 Ford or 350 whatever. I don't, it doesn't matter. I promise you your average fuel mileage is if you're getting six, you did great. Okay. Yep. All right. So <laughs> I just I always laugh because I don't even know how I know this stuff. Three miles. What's the average cost of one gallon of diesel? My average is three, $3 a gallon. Does that sound right? Fair? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm trying to show you something. So we got our insurance is only 500. Watch what our fuel is a week. It's a thousand bucks. If you run 2000 miles, it's six miles a gallon at $3 per gallon. That's a thousand bucks. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yep calculator but it's i think i just did the numbers a few minutes ago with the guy who was coaching now what is a is that not a lot of money right it's expensive and he didn't even mention tolls there's a 48 dollar <laughs> toll at ferry's bill on 95 going down and coming back up well how about uh, the 110 dollar toll for five axle to go across the george washington Oh, no, I, I, nobody goes to New York. You well, better not go to New York. <laughs> so Brian said something earlier about, you know, the ELD. Well, you got a plan. Oh, I forgot the plan because I was in a, too big of a hurry, right? So now I've got to spend the night at a hotel because I can't get comfortable in the back of my truck. So, I mean, there are a lot of expenses with this business that people just, they don't, I didn't know it was going to cost $1,000 a week just to put fuel yeah. in the truck. Yeah. yeah. Dude. Well, I can get COD on the load board. Well, let me know how that works. So anyway, I'm starting my own business. <clears throat> how do I do this? I got to have, there are certain things you have to have. Okay. That are very important. If you take everything that we've said tonight and say, you guys are stupid, that's fine. But I promise you at one point, you're going to touch a couple things. You're going to touch DOT and you're going to touch insurance. And they're going to be touched when they touch you and you don't have them. It's going to sting very bad. Just, just to put it in perspective, the FMCSA has the authority to fine you up to 12000 and I think it's $84 now. They start at eleven and they adjust it for inflation. $12,000 a day for certain violations such as operating without proper motor carrier authority and they'll look at how many days they can prove you've run to write that fine does oh. it happen often no but they can yeah they can so <clears throat> i don't know what time it is but i know i've been it's, having a good time it's after 10 i'm glad you said that it's after 10 we've got momentum we're gonna keep going for a little bit but i know at 10 o'clock something Maybe happens Everybody just turns into fairy dust. So, uh, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to keep going, because we're doing really good, and we're going to find a good end point, but we're going to keep going for a little bit longer. So, whatever that means, uh, 
Brian, I know that you know. I don't know what I don't know what your schedule is tomorrow. Ty, I don't know exactly what yours is. Lionel, same thing. But guys, we will stop by ten thirty. Can we keep going for a little bit? Sure. Uh, no I'll problem. Give, I'll give you a little more. So ten, uh, 10 Let me steer it back. Ten fifteen. <laughs> I'm I'm fine with that. But let me steer it okay. back to the important DOT topic so that people get what they came here for yes, tonight. Yes. Thank you. So you're going to start your company. You have to have insurance, so you got to make sure you can afford that. And then you have to have a USDOT number and motor carrier authority to transport property you do not own. So that right there, when you're planning, plan a month to get your motor carrier authority. There is, by regulation, a minimum of a 21-day waiting period. But in real, in the real world, the soonest I see them is 23 to 24 days, and don't fall victim to some of these companies out there to promise you they can get you your number overnight. Yeah, I can get you your number in about 30 seconds, but it's not going to be active for at least 23 to 25 days, average of 28. And if you get caught hauling with an inactive number, again, you're subject up to that $11,000 fine. Terrible way to start. To happen. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And nowadays, they actually are enforcing authority. So some states are putting you out of service, and you're unloading your truck and giving those cars to a towing company to impound or to another hauler to haul out of there, and you're getting your truck towed back out of their state if you're not compliant. And you just made me think of Safer Sis. Now, uh, what is Safer Sis? What is Safer? Safer is stands for. It's an acronym for. Oh crap! You're asking. I'm, getting I'm gonna. Tired I'll, I'll tell you the acronym. <laughs> you tell everything else. Safety and Fitness Electronic Records Fitness System. Records. Yes. Yeah, so Safety Sys is Misleading. the home that everything you do in your truck that you get caught by DOT or you willingly signed up for, like getting a motor carrier, lives in. That's the database. That's the home that everything lives in. If you know a trucking company's name or their DOT number from the side of the truck, you can punch it in at safersys.org, and you can learn their name, their address, their phone number, see how many times they've been inspected, what they've been put out of service for. You dig a little bit deeper, and you're willing to pay for the records. You can even get their email address and some other information. That's why when you apply for that DOT number, within 20 seconds, your phone starts ringing with people telling you all sorts of crap you need that maybe you do, maybe you don't, but you sure as hell don't need to pay them their 199.95 that they seem to want for every piece of paper. So Safer Sys is the home where everything lives, and it is the officer's guide to deciding if you're going to have a good day or a bad day. They look at that. That's where the data for what you may have heard of as a CSA, Compliance Safety and Accountability Score, that's where the data comes from. And so the officer looks at this, or the computer looks at it as you roll into one of these fancy automated uh, way stations, and you have what's called an inspection selection system, an ISS score, where they decide whether you get the green light, the red light, they got to look at you closer. That's why it's so important to keep a clean record because you can get that green light. Even if you pay DriveWise or one of the other bypass companies to go around the scale, they pull from that same system to see how compliant you are. The moment you haven't filed your required biannual update, it flags in there that you haven't told them how many miles you drove last year. The moment your UCR, which was due July 1st this year, the moment your UCR is overdue, it flags in that system, and the officers know, hey, here's an easy target. I used the saying low-hanging fruit. Let me pull him over and ruin his day, and I can hit my quota I need for the tickets I have to write today. Amazing. Hey, Brian. Ty. Um, so here's what I tell guys that I talk to. I'd say everything that you just said, I never say. So I say, I think you could, should talk to a guy like Brian. I think you can pay him how much, Brian? My packages start at $695 to get your DOT number, motor carrier number, your UCR, which is Unified Carrier Registration, and your BOC3, which is your process agent all filed for up to two trucks when you're starting your company. And I include in there the blank employment application because as stupid as it sounds, you're self-employed now. You've got to apply to yourself to get a job and hire yourself and your vehicle maintenance records. Everything you need to start the company and pass that new entrant audit, which we'll talk about in a minute, 
comes to you for $695, and then I'm available on subscription for $195 a month to be here and answer my phone when you have a question, when you're not sure, you get a piece of paper in the mail, it doesn't make sense. And so that's what it is, $700, and you don't have to worry about it. Right. So, And I'm saying, I'm telling everybody, that's money well spent. Okay. So the next thing that I tell people is I say, I would go ahead and highly recommend you put Brian on this. I call it a retainer. I think you said it was something for a hundred. How much? I call it it a subscription. 195 a a month for a subscription. And with that, I monitor your safety rating and I'm here to answer your question. So if you've got an officer at the side of the road giving you a hard time or you have an accident at two in the morning and you don't know what you need to do next, I'm here to answer my phone. Right. So, and here's, here's why I say, I, I really do promote a guy like Brian. Okay. Awesome. Brian, I like Brian cause I've met him and I, li- I know a bunch of, we know a lot of the same people. We run in the same crowds. We don't talk every day, maybe every month, but we probably talk once a year, but I like Brian. And the reason I like Brian is because Brian will take care of this. So 600, let's just call it 700 bucks to get your DOT set up. Okay. And that's full setup. So I'm sign me up. I want that. Now, the second thing is I want the retainer or the subscription, and I don't want it just so I can call him and tell him I had a problem. Here's what I want, because guess who's going to be come knocking on your door before too long after you get it set up, Brian? You're going to have an audit within the first 180 days, generally. I've had one happen as early as day 34 after the company started. Wow. It's actually someone you recommended to me. Day 34 <laughs> after they filed, they had their first, they had their uh, new entrant audit. And so you will have an audit where they will verify you have safety process management in place, you have your paperwork in place, your right. DQ so let's, let's, files let's, and all this other stuff right. that you so, yeah. really <laughs> never thought of. No, yeah, yeah, and that's where the subscription comes yeah. in handy because I walk you through this. I watch all these rules so you don't have to, and I send out to my customers a regular update when something important happens, like the waiver that said you didn't need a new medical card right now because of COVID-19. My customers know about that, so they're not stressing out that my medical expired March 15th. I don't know what to do. Well, you don't need one until September 30th right now. Right. So what I'm so telling guys, that's what that's for. Right. So this is this is awesome, man. this is good because here's you're wow. seeing what I sell. I sell I sell Brian. And the reason I sell Brian is because I've been down this road and I had my own Brian a long time ago. And I'm telling you if you're the guy that wants to really own your own business and build a business, this is this is a different world right here. What we're talking about, this guy Brian, this is different. This isn't sales. This isn't what kind of cool truck and trailer I got. This is this is this is serious. This will shut you down, or you will pay a lot of money in fines. The last DOT audit I got, I think, was ten grand, in just fines, right? That has been several years ago. But the point is, is it's it's like a snake, and it can really get a hold of you. And when it does, it can hurt you or kill you, put you out of business. So. There's stuff like DQ files. What's a DQ file? DQ, driver qualification file. What is that? Well, did you hear Brian say you have to fill out an employment application for yourself? That goes in your driver qualification file. And there's way more than just that employment that goes in there. There's your drug screen. There's your previous employment. And you have to have these in that file because when they do come to your door, they will ask for the file. Right, Brian? Absolutely. And even if you're going to be what we call another industry term, asset light, which means you don't own the truck and you don't drive it, but you're going to hire owner operators, you still have to do 100% of this compliance for them as if you owned their truck and as if you employed them as a company employee. So no matter what, when you're running a truck, you have these obligations and it is a never ending cycle as you add drivers, as you change drivers. Right. And so Jay always asks this question, man, is a guy, one guy, how is he supposed to keep up with all this stuff? I have no idea. <laughs> all right, I really Jay, don't. What do you do? Well, you start farming it out. And this is how things grow organically, right? So I've, I'm running down the road. I don't know and I don't care. I just am so happy I'm driving my truck and trailer. All right? right. I'm happy to be on cars. Counting the dollars, dollars right? Okay. Thinking about the gas and... My you know, insurance payment. Right. My wife wants me to hurry up. And, and the get cracks in the pavement that never end. 
I'll give you guys the silver lining to all all of this, the scary stuff, is that everything that Brian is going over and everything that Ty is going over, it's going to help you get a cheaper rate on your insurance if or you are up to date with your compliance. That is Amen. one of the silver lines that comes with, the, with this. I can't tell you how many safety experts at different insurance companies I work with from I have customers that are three and five hundred employee customers and so I work directly with their HS and E guys, that's health, safety, environmental, from their insurance carriers and in their company as a other set of eyes to make sure things are right. And you're absolutely right, Lionel. The more compliant we are, the less of a risk we are. It's all about managing risk which is why you hire right, why you behave as a driver. And contrary to popular belief, when you get a CDL, it's not a separate license from your car license, so it doesn't give you permission to go do 110 miles an hour on your Ducati and get a ticket for that and then wonder why you can't get insurance in your truck anymore. But, yes, right. compliance does save you money. Yeah, it really does. <clears throat> and that, and I also, just one more thing, I get really excited about this because – what you're looking at, if you're watching this right now, I'm just telling you, this is this is what I might even call the trifecta with four. Just add four to the tri, because really, you you <laughs> have starting your business. There are these basic things you you will have to deal with, right? You, you're gonna have to deal with that guy Brian and that guy Lionel, right? You're gonna have to. You don't have. You can bypass me, but I'm telling you, these two guys, you're gonna have to talk to them. You, and, you know, along the way. Ty. You know what's amazing? We've been we've we've been to conferences where it costs a lot of money to get in a room to get less information than this. <laughs> yeah, this is incredible. This, this is, really is insane. insane. <laughs> this is good info. <laughs> it really. Is. I love what's it's happening. It's so much fun to have an expert like Brian here because I'm I've lived. It. I mean, I know you want a Brian and you want a Lionel and you want to have a relationship with him, which goes all the way back to what we always talk about on this show all the time. It's about relationships. And you look in that live chat and you look who's there every week, every other week. This is becoming family. I mean, this is wow. a very cool knit group. And, and it is people like these guys that Amen. we do have to have. So. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah. I do appreciate you both. We really appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. I get my dose of ATI every day. Every day. <laughs> well, stuff. now you can, right? Four days a week. <laughs> That's right. I'm loving it. And, and you know, and I want to say this. I think that, um, I, I, I think that like, dispatching live and um, cars on the move are nice compliments to each other. Um, and they complement this flagship Tuesday nights. I think that uh, I think Wednesdays with Ryan, we're still tweaking that, um, where it's going to be you know more company focused and um, actually what's neat, Ryan on a couple of his shows, he's really talking about branding strategy and business strategy, which is cool. Which brings us back to step one, right? Because once you've got step one, and you're going to always be you know, crafting it and honing it, right, and perfecting that business strategy. But once you've got liftoff, you realize you've got to have all these other pieces in place. And so I treasure a show where we cover such a broad slice of the ecosystem yeah. as tonight. This is amazing. I hate to stop oh. the show. <laughs> let, let me answer two things that I just saw in the live chat here. Cool. Uh, Thank you. I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer Bridget. Yes, this compliance stuff does apply to brokers as well. They're regulated by Federal Motor Carrier. They have a lot less regulation than the carrier does, but it does apply to them. So they do have rules to comply with. Uh, for Gary Autos Logistics, yes, you can just visit my website and send me an email, and uh, I'll get you set up where I can work with you. And uh, I saw earlier up in the live chat, Michael had mentioned PSP as well. And to answer his question, that depends on what the customer wants. If they want the PSP and we can legitimately do it because you're only allowed to pull a PSP when you're hiring somebody, then yes, I will pull a PSP. There are other methods to check on somebody's compliance as they're going. Uh, there are other methods to check on a driver's compliance while they're still 
employed by you where you're not legally allowed to run the PSP and that can be set up to be monitored as well. That's not included in the basic service because that costs me money to pay the service that monitors that for me. So uh, the only other thing I want to touch on real quick because it's a fresh one right now is UCR, Unified Carrier Registration. They're normally due at the beginning of the year, but it's been postponed, postponed. July 1st, your fees were due. If you have not paid it, do not pay the $199.95 to the companies that keep telling you you're late. Go to UCR.gov, enter your DOT number, and pay it yourself. Uh, for two trucks, it's 60 some dollars. There's no need to pay a $200 processing fee to f do a $60 filing. But make sure you have it because it's something that they'll put you out of service for right now. It's a fresh... Uh, um, it is a uh, it's fresh of mind right now, so they're looking for it. And remember, you're gonna have to do it again in October when they release the fees for 2021. You'll have to have it done by the end of December. And uh, so yes, Michael, yes, I do them when you're hiring somebody uh, that is not yourself because you should know your own record. But if you're gonna bring on a uh, leased driver or an employee driver, I strongly recommend PSP, and I can run them then under those circumstances. By the way, real quick, you just reminded me, isn't there a July CVSA road check, or am I wrong about that? Next. They, uh, they canceled this next, year, next, right? Next they week. did? Well, the, the, the road check has been canceled, but starting the 11th, so end of this week, early next week, they're going to be doing a uh, driver behavior enforcement. So they're going to be looking for aggressive driving uh, around trucks and cars. Right, so and, that, and that's a specific vacation. period of time. So near the end of this week for, think, what, five to seven days? Yeah, I think it's the 11th to 16th or something. I'd have to go look on their site. But, that's uh, just a coincidence. That's another service. Yeah, I've heard of it. Right, it just one of the many things you get by having a subscription with yourdotguy.com. That's a good commercial for me, Jay. Thank you. <laughs> All right, man. You're welcome. I mean, I'm definitely getting... I mean, this is amazing. This is a, this is an amazing show available. We're live now. This will be on demand on YouTube. Think of all the people that will get benefit ongoing from this show. It's that's awesome. It's a good show, man. I'm really serious. I mean, so did we, what did we learn? I good. Let's we're... recap. Let's try yeah. to recap. Try to recap. Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What did I learn? Uh, <laughs> I've, I've learned you need a lot of capital. It's a lot more expensive than you think it's going to be. However, it can be a very rewarding career when you do it right. You need to commit to doing it right. Being half-assed is not going to do anybody any good. Yourself, it's going to cost you a fortune. It's going to drive up the price for everybody else. We all should be upset at the guys that are doing it halfway because – that's why we see these increases in premium. That's why we see the increased enforcement on our trucks from the people that are not doing it right. And, and we see a lot of Facebook angst from professionals about people that are doing it half, right? <laughs> I mean, yes. that's about half of auto transport Facebook comments. Well, you know, you always talk yes. about elephants in the room, Jay. And you always talk about the big guys don't make fun of the little wedgie guys. Right. Right here's kind of where it gets, because I'm a, I'm a big truck guy, right? I think uh, Brian's a big truck guy. Lionel's probably a big truck guy. But this is where, this is what, Jay, Jay, Jay and I have these long conversations about <clears throat> why does everybody hate the wedgie group so much? It's not because they're stupid and we don't need them it's because w this part right here is really hard for them and, I, and i'm not trying to be mean to them or take up for them but I, i'm just saying right about here okay i got my truck trailer now i need my authority now i need insurance these are big expenses that probably weren't calculated in the equation somewhere maybe they didn't you know and, and here's the thing man i've made so many mistakes so i'm not making fun of the guy that didn't check insurance price before he bought the truck and trailer. I did it. <laughs> I did it right. 20 years I, ago. I'm telling you. So I'm not making fun of anybody. What I'm trying to tell you is that you need people that know what they 
what they're currently doing that Can because of experience. We were talking about that earlier. Remember, guys, about the educations we've gotten in this business? There are plenty of them. So if you can align yourself with people through Jay's show, you know, I'll talk to you for 15 minutes. Brian will talk to you. Lionel will talk to you. We'll talk. To, we'll help mm -hmm. you. At some point, you will have to show out some money. But the point would be there's plenty of resources here, right here in this little show, that, man, you can save a lot of headache. A lot. Well, uh, well said. Yeah. Well said. Thank you for that. And I'll tell <laughs> We'll do. Uh, we'll put put a, put a little cherry on top here. The question, since we talked about a lot of things, are dispatchers illegal? It's going to depend on how they're running their business, and I get a lot of pushback on this. Uh, mm. I'm not completely in line with uh, James Lamb, but I'm not completely opposed to where he's at either. Right. You can be a dispatcher a third party for a motor carrier and be legal provided that you are provided that you are working for that carrier at the time you're soliciting the work you can't just go find work and call people up and say yeah sure i can run uh, chicago to uh to uh albany new york no problem no problem at all and then go find a carrier to haul you have to have carriers you're under contract with and you have to be working on their interests and otherwise you're a broker if you're finding work and then finding the truck for it later that is the definition of a broker this could be a whole nother show yes but it is if they run their business mm -hmm. properly they can be a bona fide agent and be a contractor for more than one trucking company at the same time that's Do the simplest way to uh sum it up and, and i'm and we're going to keep it simple oh go ahead lionel yeah i have one mystery question for you brian uh, a lot of my guys would like to know is the uh, the bed in the south on the back of the picture pickup truck as opposed to just the chassis in the uh, I guess the length of the truck. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get clarity on for 65 foot with the bed on or with the bed off. If you have a pickup truck or other finished bed on your truck, most states will look at you as what is called a truck trailer combination so regardless of the type of hitch you use whether it's a bumper pole ball gooseneck pintle fifth wheel if there is a finished bed on the truck it is a truck trailer combination and that in most states is limited to 65 foot from the front of the bumper of the truck to the rear of the trailer and any load that's on the trailer now not every state follows that rule not every state will consider taking the pickup box off enough to make it not be truck trailer. My home state of Pennsylvania is one. Pennsylvania requires a reconstructed vehicle inspection change the brand on the title from truck to tractor before they will allow you to be considered a tractor trailer if it's a Pennsylvania registered vehicle. Some other states have similar processes. So that's one of those muddy questions that there is no federal guidance on it so you run in 50 different states you have 50 different answers for that wow uh some states if you take the pickup box off mount your hitch on the frame rail throw some fenders on it you're a tractor trailer there is no overall length limit as long as your trailer is 53 foot or shorter you go to other states you can have a 57 foot long trailer uh this also plays into the overhang rules where the if you're not a stinger steer, so the fifth wheel's not mounted below and behind your rear axle, if you're a traditional truck and trailer, tractor trailer, then you're not allowed overhang under the federal highway administration's interpretation of the length rules. Plus, then you get states like Pennsylvania that says, oh, you're a car hauler we're gonna, and you're a high mount or a traditional car hauler, we're going to call, tell you you can only be 65 foot long. So to answer the question in the live chat, why does Missouri not allow overhang? Because they don't have to. There's no federal law that says overhang must be allowed on anything except a stinger.
steer auto transporter. So Missouri enforces their state law, which they have every legal right to do right now. That said, there is a bill that's being considered in this year's Congress to change that and allow high mounts to be 75 foot long bumper to bumper with uh, three foot of overhang in the uh, front and four in the rear, which would be comparable to what the old Stinger rules were. I hope it makes it through, but I don't know if it will yet or not. Hated to go down that rabbit hole, but that it was a viable ticket that one of my guys got running down in the south lanes. It it is a viable ticket. It happens quite often because most times you put a 40-foot trailer behind an extended cap pickup truck and you're 67 foot long. And when you get an officer that knows that, he starts seeing him by eye and says, I'm going to pull you over because I'm going to get an easy ticket here because he's two foot over length. Then you add overhang in there and, oh, well, now you're 74, 75 foot long. And remember, just because you're hauling cars does not mean it's allowed to hang off the front or back of the trailer. There is no guarantee because cars are what's called a divisible load, meaning they don't care if you make money, you can take one out of the load and fit it in the length of your trailer without overhang. That is what the states expect. And I think this is another area where there's a lot of assumptions. And when it comes down to uh, that moment, those assumptions don't work out so well. And I know, correct. Like, I mean, you, yeah, you would think when you spend sixty to eighty thousand dollars to buy a high mount trail or Wally Mo trailer that can only haul cars, it would be an auto transporter. Yeah. but it is not under the current inter. And the worst part is, it's not even the letter of the law or the regulation. Let me speak correctly. It's not the letter of the regulation. It's Federal Highway's interpretation of the regulation. <laughs> That has it wrong. We did a show and on this with Oida. That was amazing. I yeah. I actually, I think I think I was there while you had Mike on on that show. I remember talking were, to him on that. Were you were yes, live with us I, on that show? I was. I I think I was on your panel there. Oh, I don't see awesome, eye to eye with man. Mr. Matusik on a yeah. lot of things because well. I also represent the towing industry. But on that, we see eye to eye. You know, it, the legal shows are hard to put together. I mean, you got Hank Seaton, and then, well, obviously, we, I did the one with James Lamb, and then Mike Matusik. I mean, obviously, if I could get everybody on a carousel and, you know, playing the music, that'd be amazing, but that's just not the way legal things work. I got to no, tell one I... more. Sorry, Brian. I'm, one more. I was just sitting here thinking about the value of a guy like Brian. I, I can't stop thinking about it because today, here, this is no joke. He, he, he. Remember at the beginning, I said, hey, I sent you a couple of guys. He said, yeah, I talked to both of them. Okay, the first guy I sent him was somebody that we actually came. Remember when we did the seminar in Nashville? This guy, uh, Vance, great guy, been part of the show, part of everything. Anyway, he's trying to build his business. He leases a guy on, right? This is what Brian was talking about earlier, about the oil that dropped on the ground, the little drop that cost the dude 500 bucks. Okay, that's only the first part of this ticket. Okay, this ticket ends up being almost two thousand dollars. So as Brian's talking, you guys are talking. I'm sitting here like, do you guys really understand how valuable Brian is? Watch this. This is crazy. One hundred ninety-five bucks a month. So round that up to two hundred. Two hundred times twelve months is two thousand four hundred dollars. Is that about right? Yeah. Okay, watch this. The dude that I told you better call Brian that called me today, okay? He came in through Jay's show, talks to me, comes to a class, figures it out. Okay, he's running, building his business. Go, 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 go. He leases a dude on the dude. The guy finds a drop of oil on the ground. What was the second? Anyway, the point is, is that by the time they're done with this guy, it was over two grand, wasn't it, Brian, or real close to it? That's it. 1700 for the registration one that I'm going to probably successfully challenge and 500 for the oil. Yeah. So that's uh, that equals, if I'm doing my math right, $2,200. So that's a year's Long-stop. subscription. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the funny part is, oh okay, God. could it's not the, 17, funny, but... the 1700 probably could have been avoided by having Brian in the beginning, but Right. And I'm not not talking any trash on Vance. Vance is an amazing, guy, really good guy, and he's he's just trying to build his business. But how can you know all this stuff? Exactly. Well, that's my it, point. I'll give you a point. You can sell Ty in his in my conversation with his driver this afternoon. 
uh, I also found out that his fire extinguisher is not mounted in his truck out of a simple question he asked me. That can be a uh, $200 fine at a DOT yep. check if they want to write it. So that paid for one month of subscription right there because he's going to go mount his fire extinguisher tonight. Yeah. And I mean, it's just, I, I just, I can't tell you guys enough. Like, I, I, I can tell you how to go find cars and haul cars and all that. That's that, And it's important. But I'm just, the next two important things in your business and you owning your business, the next two things is this guy, Brian, and this guy, Lionel. I, I'm just promise. And I am whatever, anything in me, just believe me. These, and it doesn't, I'm not saying you have to have Brian, you have to have Lionel, but you have to have DOT, you have to have insurance. I personally like Brian and Lionel and we've done a lot of business. I recommend them, but I'm telling you, if you want to be a car hauler, you will have to deal with these two things. Sorry. And I, I'll second that. A good insurance agent can be your best friend. He doesn't want your rates to go up any more than you do because he makes his money renewing your policy every year and the residuals he gets off of it. So he's going to bust his butt to try to keep you on the straight and narrow and find you, shop you the best possible policy you can get. So if you get a good, hard-charging insurance guy, he's not going to just – collect your money from one of the big ones with the girl on the TV, he's going to go find you the best insurance possible. So you need a good insurance guy on your back, so, on, on your corner. Right. And the reason you, I like you, need, you also need somebody who care about your, yourself and yourself and your business and somebody who can relate to what it is that you're going through. Cause this is a very highly emotional uh, transaction when you're in the middle of these truck payments, the insurance payment, time away from your family, time away from your kids. It just all adds up. Oh, yeah. And uh, you, you got to be guided through. <laughs> That's a well, good point. I like how you pointed out the emotional aspect because it's highly emotional. It can get yeah. gritty. And when life gets gritty and you're really stressed out, it's hard to keep your head screwed on. Yeah. And here's it. And I'm not kidding. Lionel's Lionel's been there. You know, he said he's, he's chewed on a lot of the same dirt we have. He has. And the reason I like Lionel, he's a relationship guy and he's going to tell it to you straight. He's, I mean, love it or hate it. That's, that's the kind of people you need in your life in this particular business. You need people who are going to tell you whether you want to hear it or not. This is how it is. Mm -hmm. So good show, man. I really wow. appreciate both of you guys. That wow. was Jay. Thank you. Man, just, thank, thank you, you guys. That was amazing. Yeah, I see. I learned a lot. I, I got here in my notepad here. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm dipping. I'm taking notes at the same time. I'm doing the show with Brian. <laughs> good. Everybody should. It's I always all good. I always have this. Is you can't read this, and I do that on purpose so nobody can read it, including me. But you should always right, have. Right yes, here. Always have your notepad and your pen. Everybody knows that, but uh, yeah, I want to thank everybody. Um, I'm going to start at the top here. Brian, thank you so much for taking the time. We only went through that one flow chart. We have other stuff we didn't go through. We're going to have to bring you back in the future. Um, we'll figure that out. Brian, thank you so much. Visit yourdotguy.com. It is Fleet Compliance Solutions, LLC. You can't go wrong. Brian, thank you so much. Lionel Thank you, Yates. Jay. My pleasure to be here. Yeah, man. Really appreciate it. And Lionel Yates, CY Financial Solutions, Inc. Um, Lionel, you so you've got autohauler.com. That's auto-hauler.com. Yes, right? sir. And and what and so people go, what happens when you go to all autohauler.com? Autohauler.com, you can go there. It'll uh, uh, give you information on a regular basis in regards to the uh, trucking industry itself. And uh, also, if you go there and put your uh, name and email address, uh, it'll put together 12 preparation things you can do prior to the time of uh, getting uh, to applying for your insurance to help you save money prior to it. Mm, that's good. I like that. Um, and by the way, yeah, I just Googled CDL flowchart, and there are CDL flowcharts just floating around Google. Unless, do you have one to recommend, by the way? Uh, Any one that pops up on Google is good. That one came out of the uh, guidebook they make the CDL manual for, so you can go to whatever state you live in and get the CDL manual. You can download it, and 
you'll have all sorts of good information in there. Also, there's several states that have some really great truckers, Google Truckers Handbook. And there's some states like Tennessee that have some really good guidebooks, 30, 40 pages of what the rules are and how to comply with it. And that'll give you a good jumping off point to have an idea if this is something you want to tackle yourself or you want to bring in a professional to help you with it. And I equate it to hiring an accountant make sure you get all your tax deductions in there you, they know the rules they deal with it inside now and, and check this out so what i just did also lionel is i went to auto hauler there's the fmcsa.dot.gov site but i went to auto hyphen hauler.com and kind of like you were talking about so if i scroll down i can go into is this kind of the area where i'll enter information Yes, sir. Okay. Name, business, email, some information, questions about my business, right? Step one. Mm hmm And then, okay, cool. That is awesome. There's a phone number. There is... There's a phone number. Directions a, to my office right there. Okay. Is there an email address as well? Uh, yes, sir. It's cyfinancialsolutions at yahoo.com. So let's do this stop share. All right, so I'm going to put that in here too. I always like to, it's kind of how I like to start to put the bow on the show. Info at CY Financial Solutions. Was that right? Info at yes. CY Financial Solutions dot com. Mm -hmm. All right, and Brian, is there an email address for your DOT guy dot com? Yes, they is. Uh, yes, yes, they is. Wow. <laughs> it's yes, late, there. man. <laughs> oh, it is. Uh, <laughs> I've been oh, up yeah. since about 4 o'clock this morning, Dude, too. Dude, we're, uh, all, well, we're so close. It's Riker at Fleet Compliance solutions.net but the easiest is just go to your dot com or fleet compliance solutions.net use my contact me page it'll send me an email and then i'll get back to you okay cool so i'm gonna say and, and also on yeah. on my website if you uh, have questions about elds there's a tab up there for eld information it's written for the towing industry but most of it applies to the car haul industry as well and they can learn a little bit more about me and the team i have working with me all right, cool. I'm going to just put, I'll reference the website and then contact. And then finally, Ty, CTS Business Coaching, dude. Whoa. 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 Okay, so <laughs> what's up? Um, you know, it was amazing. We had the monthly roundtable last night. This is an awesome new addition to what we're oh. doing. Yeah, I want to give a little plug for that. Do you care? I'll do it, man. Yeah, so here's what I learned at the round table that Jay's talking about. So it's Jay, myself, uh, Ryan. Ryan's the car guy, by the way. He knows all the dealers. So right there, just having him. That's a there, lot of fun. dealers. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, we had two, I believe, that showed up at the round table. So here's the thing. Constantine and Bridget. Mark, Michael Kohler. Oh, and Michael Kohler. Yeah, and I think Kim might have been in the background somewhere. But anyway, here's the point. As we were doing this, I thought this, you know what is so valuable about this? By the way, okay, so here's the thing. And I, I believe this, but I, I believe it. I can sell this and really like it. It's 95 bucks a month just to show up for about an hour and a half. That seems awful stupid until you get in there. Because what I learned oh, last man. night was, here's what I figured out. And it reminded me, talking to Constantine. We drive down the road and we think nonstop. We get home and we think nonstop. And all oh, we know. think about is this business. We think about what we did today, what we're gonna to do tomorrow, how it worked, how it didn't work, how I can make it better, what do I need to make it better? I mean, we're just constant. Go home and try to talk to anybody in your family about this stuff. <laughs> go home and talk, I mean, go down to church on Sunday and try to talk to the guys at church in the Bible club about how your week went. Nobody, nobody, I, listen to me. I don't know anybody that understands what we do. That really can have a logical. So I just decided, hey, this is a safe place. <laughs> I mean, he was able to come in. He was like, man, I don't know what to do. You know, Jay, Jay asked the question, hey, what is Brian doing? What do you need? He's like, well, I really don't know. And I said, I know what you need. You just need a place to come and just yap. 
and, <laughs> and when you pointed that out to me, I got to thinking. So, because what happens is, you someone can say, "Well, how many people showed up?" And I thought, "We're looking at this wrong." By asking how many people showed up, your that's a half hour that you could have had the floor, but you didn't. Yeah, it was a, it was really good, and it, and it just. Yeah, so I'm I'm plugging my own round or our round table. I'm plugging yeah, it. Because, it's awesome. I love it. <laughs> it really was. It was good. And it's I think cool. man, more people that show up there and can talk, you know, questions like I talk okay, so here, this really happened in this round table. Constantine, what are you up to? Well, I did what you told me to. So I went and talked to seven car dealers today. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. How'd it go? Well, the first one I was scared out of my mind. Second one I was scared out of my third. I was scared. And they kept telling me, now nah, we're good, go away. Finally gets to number seven. <laughs> made the connection, right? And so we started talking about it. Well, it was pretty rough first time, wasn't it? Yeah, what did you do different next time? What did you do? Just as we continue to talk about it, we get to number seven and we say, hey, I bet it went a lot smoother, didn't it? Yeah. And then Ryan made an incredible point. He said, whatever is really make what you're afraid of right now, you're like, man, I know I should go do that, but I can't, or I don't want to, or I'm scared. That's when you go do it. And so just these little bitty, I mean, little, small, small ideas, like just hearing that. For me, I was like, I've got plenty of things I'm afraid of. I'm going to go do them. So I did. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it just, it was an encouraging environment that, you know people are, get what you're saying. So I recommend the Cars on the Move Roundtable. And I'm going to point this out, too, is that while we're doing the deconstruction and the analysis, we stayed on the topic of auto transport. We didn't switch to weather or whatever. No, we didn't even talk about masks. <laughs> just kidding. I, just, I had to throw it out. <laughs> So anyways, and I'm glad we talked about it. I know we got to let everybody go. This is a long show. This was a great show. Thank you guys so much. And let's be in, I know we'll be in touch. Well done. All right. right. Thank you guys. Have a great night. Peace out, my friends. Okay. Wow. Wow. Um, that's a lot of information. And um, really glad that we got to do that. Okay, cool. Danny B says, hey, so the, and uh, Ryan is in here. Ryan's in the live chat, I think. Um, Ryan, if you're here, will you help make sure Danny gets on the list? Um, and I know because we've got a few things. We've got the we've been talking about cars on the move round table. Um, now that is there is a fee to join the round table or wait. No, wait a minute. That's if you also want coaching. I'm still learning it, too, because it's new. So we have the roundtable. You can just register for and, 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 and hang out and listen. If you want coaching and roundtable, that's where there's a fee. So there's the ATI Insider. You can get make sure you get information about ATI. You can register for the roundtable and listen in. But if you need coaching... That's where you want to um, sign up for CTS Business Coaching. We will we will ke- continue crafting the marketing so this gets explained better. But listen, this is not. I don't I don't say these things because it's a money making deal for me. This is not about. Really, what I'm about is building the channel and 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 getting enough money to continue to do that. That's my goal. All the experts on here, that is information that the ecosystem needs. And um, I'm super excited. These kinds of shows, this is nuts. This is insane information. Like I said earlier, and I've had it rolling around in my head, that was way more information than I've gotten in workshops that cost money. So um, thank you guys so much for sticking around. Uh, Yeah, okay, (laughs) that's cool. No, listen, thank you in the live chat for all of the intercommunication that you do. If we missed something, let us know. If we assumed something and we were wrong, we apologize. That's a joke. Thank you so much for tuning in to Auto Transport Intel. It has been a long show. I think it's time to go. Please be safe. 
Um, keep us posted. If, if you got something I need to know, autotransportintel at gmail.com. Please remember to like, tell your friends. Um, oh, here we go. Let me click this too. Just so I, I like to see this slide last because I really do appreciate you guys tuning in. Tomorrow we've got Wednesday on auto conversion. Feel free to tune in. We're still working on the uh, tempo and, uh, and theme of the show. But Thursdays, Dispatching Live, that shows off the hook. It's growing. Cars on the move. Still working on that one, too, and that. This one's a tough one. I know it's, it's hard for some folks to figure out how connecting dealers, auctions, and carriers fits into their business model. But I promise you this. When, when Ty starts talking about the five types of dealers, new car store, independent dealer, wholesale, buy here, pay here, rental, and fleet... I promise there's no way you're hauling cars during a week without touching one of those. That's impossible. I don't believe it. If it's true, let me know. Send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. That's it. I'm out of here. Here comes the car hauler. Stay safe. Thanks so much for joining, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>